and we only see digits. Hey, you want to know? Yeah, I love Jimmy. Big old Jimmy. What's up, you bitches? It's really early today. I hope you've noticed. And it's because of the man on my left, Dan Vask. What's up, dude? Yeah, I'm I'm in a different time zone, but also I go to sleep in like uh, uh, old women hours. So <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate Camelot adapting. To <laughs> old women hours? Oh, my God. Wow. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, dude, I go to bed at uh, like 5 a.m., which is... Oh, really? 12 hours or 10 hours from now. I don't know, dude. I can't sleep. And then I wake up at 10. So I'm like five. I get five hours of sleep, but I just don't uh, I don't like being asleep. Unless oh, I've gotten real drunk. <laughs> then I sleep. Yeah, sleeping, sleeping is my Achilles heel. It, yeah, like I can, I can, I can fast for three straight days, but I don't, I, I cannot go 24 hours without sleep. Oh, yeah. Um. Well, I've only had to do it a couple times. I, we went... I had an event down in Daytona in Florida and I had to drive down there and the car broke down um, my hauler and I had to get another hauler and it took like eight hours and then I had to drive to Daytona and then immediately oh, right when I got there, I had to get in my, my race car, my cup car and then turn you race, back. right? Yeah. And I wrecked. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> I wrecked immediately. <laughs> well, boom, hit the wall head on. It was great. I was like, well, some bitch. Damn. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> yeah. I just went home. I was like, fuck this. I'm done. <laughs> I can't believe this happened. By the way, Malty, Malty, Maldi, is that a, that looks like the, the cover for the single, uh, Chelsea Smile by Bring Me the Horizon. That's what that looks like to me. I might be crazy. Um, love Bring Me the Horizon. Uh, thank you, Malty. Also gifted five memberships. Real quick, since people are just super chatting and I haven't even said anything yet, um, if we hit Naked Snake, which is 100 or 212 in a row, I think, if we hit Naked Snake, Dan Bass is going to sing. Snake Eater with his beautiful hey, hey. voice. <laughs> I thought we were going to do it together. Oh, we'll do it together. Yeah, it'll be hilarious. Um, yeah, let's do it. I just don't want you to outshadow me. You don't outclass me. And everybody's going to make fun of me. Damn, that's a better singer. I'm like, yeah, I know. He's a singer. I'm not. <laughs> no, you, you you don't have to worry about it because it will sound terrible regardless. Yes. So great. Oh, my gosh. Um, speaking of uh, sounding terrible, Billy Hatcher already with a juicy ass pink boy. Look at this man. Oh, nice. time to get this shit started. Also, F Twitter for banning your account over humor. Yes, yeah, oh, we were we were talking about it before we we went live. Yeah, Stupid yeah. So shit. I am a perma band. I am perma band on Twitter, um, and it's not a it's not a suspension. It's not a timed ban. It is perma for real. Insane because yeah. I'm 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 timed out from my main account. So we, we're both using backup accounts here. Someone made that remark on Twitter. It's pretty funny, but you were perma banned. That's yeah. insane. Perma forever. That's like, forever. it's like somebody shot me and I died. That's it. It's over. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> I'm a dead person digitally, now. digitally dead. Yeah. And it sucks because I was getting paid by put by Twitter. Now I'm sad. Oh, you were monetized. Yeah. I was monetized. It's over now. It's really sad. And, um, it's really stupid. I'll tell people in the chat really what happened. And by the way, thanks again, oh Malty, Malty Maldi, for another five gifted memberships. You're so goaded. I appreciate that. And uh, real quick, uh, Shani with the ducks. Look at all them ducks. I appreciate you, baby. An orange boy to start us off, Shani. And don't forget Cajun Corey. What's pooping, Dan? I can't. I appreciate you, Cajun. What's pooping? What's pooping? Not me. Okay, because I've, I've been on a <laughs> diet, so I don't poop. I poop like once a week on my diet. It's really weird. Damn. Um, but anyways, yeah. So I was a dumbass. And I've been saying the, the F slur a lot because I'm trying to bring it back because I, I believe right. it's a fun word to say. It's bouncy. It's rhythmic. You know, it's good. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's at the tip of of the tongue for, uh, of everybody. Yeah. It's, like, like, it's, it's, that's it's all I unnatural say. not to say it. Yeah. It's extremely unnatural. It's all I want to say. I wish that was <laughs> like, my entire like vocabulary was just that word. No, but um. So I've been saying it a little bit, you know, having fun. And it's been great. My most uh, liked tweets of the last three days were all literally just that word once. <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, but I got permaban, and I thought it was because of that. When I saw when I logged in and it was like, you've been suspended. And I was like, oh, I've, maybe I'm timed out. Nope. It was forever. So I was sad. But I looked at the, the tweet in question, 
And it was quite literally my quote tweet to an article about an Australian man who had broken into somebody's house and the guy he the guy's house who he broke into, the guy proceeded in self-defense, like you said, to grape him. <laughs> Grape them. Like, Self defense grape. It's hilarious. Hey. It's like, like, the, the guy broke into a house and then immediately just gets held down. I'm like, hey, it's like, hey man, you you broke into my house. You forfeit you, any yeah. right you have over your asshole. Yeah, you know, it's mine now. So <laughs> it's mine now. He better be happy he didn't get shotgun. So um, he just yeah. got you know he got a different kind of load and that's fine. But <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I, all I did was I, I quote tweeted it. And I said, I agreed. I was like, if you break into my house, I will grape you. It's hilarious. Did you, use, did, you, did you use the YouTube language, grape? Or did you no. actually say, you actually said the word? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I thought it was, you know, I got I to gotta be true to myself, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I, but I, I, I see how someone from, from, tw from, from Twitter looking at that and not knowing the context and not knowing you, could have a problem with that. Like yeah. those people are probably reviewing a bunch of stuff, like hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of tweets. They just saw yours, not knowing anything else about it, not not realizing it was a joke. Like, bang, yep, banned forever. Like they could have got forever. me a week. They could have been like, "Hey, man, like you, you acknowledge what you said was messed up, you know?" And I'd have been like, "Look, I need my access. I need money." But no, they didn't yeah. even let me have that opportunity. Did you have trouble with that account on Twitter before? Oh, I've been banned a lot of uh, several times. They yeah. probably have uh uh like your they backtrack your record or yeah. something like that and they yeah. they probably know this guy gets in trouble a lot so get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I unofficially, you know, I don't have another account because I'm not ban evading. But there is another account that's on there that is ran by a different person that uh, talks to me sometimes. So follow me on that on Twitter. Somebody I'm sure in the chat, uh, one of the mods have that link already. There you um, go. But yeah, so that sucks. So I lost that. And Twitter was actually 90% of my off-site traffic from YouTube or on YouTube was from Twitter. So that sucks. Oh, really? Wow. Rest in peace. Yeah, my, dude, my Twitter was blowing up the last couple of months. It's been... That's interesting. Going up and up and up. And uh, yeah, it's over now. So rest in peace i'll bring up the tweet people are asking to see the actual tweet by the way holy ozone <laughs> shitty deal bud appreciate you buddy for the gold boy already a fifth of the way to naked snake for the 212th time love you rob so i'll pull up the tweet real quick and uh we'll we'll show you exactly what happened and i don't know dude twitter's been a damn cesspool lately but let me find it real quick a lot of people yeah. are following the new account like lovely or luckily um here we go i'm sure somebody's posted it this goofy ass this goofy ass or, you know, and for a little bit of context, I was in a fight, unintentional fight, by the way, with a furry. <laughs> Damn furries, man. That's always a worthy fight. Yes. And they were really pissed at me. And one of the main furries in question was like this gross dude that happens to be a trans woman, but just looks like a dude, of course. And it just has their like penis out in their profile because they have an OnlyFans or Fansly or whatever. It's really gross, but whatever. And they're a furry. Okay. So the furries definitely mass reported me. And this is actually the furry in question. So this does is it, the does person. it Did it have uh, an audience? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is the person, Blue full Fluff, Bull Fluff. Um, it's not, it, it's never only furry, by the way, right? It's mm -hmm. not, it's, there's always something else going on. Yep. Like furry plus Children. trans albino dwarf. Yeah. 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 They are, they're all, it's, it's cause they, the thing about furries is they have to desperately fit in. That's the whole point. So they just adopt every single movement possible. So I think um, that person doesn't feel special enough with whatever they, they are. Yeah. I gotta add furry to that. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> I just need to oh. add a furry. Um, <laughs> yeah. But this person says right here, this is the person that I went after and I didn't really go after him. I just said, you know, something about how they're uh they put up flyers and they said trans rights is human rights which is whatever but they put their little furry on the side of it and i'm like no one cares about the furry that i makes saw it that post yeah. it just makes it like... creepy so <laughs> they are right here this is a out of context tweet of them defending they say uh that somebody says th this person that i was talking about claims that people aren't you know that are into children are not actually like pedos and this person's like how is dating a minor not 
like pedo. And it's this person says just because you're dating a minor doesn't mean you're a pedo. A pedo would be somebody that just wants to date a minor just for pleasure. And I'm like, okay, so as long as the the only reason you're not dating them is for play, it, maybe you like their eyes, maybe you like their hair. Now suddenly it's okay. This is the same person, by the way, that said that. So the tweet in question, Holy fuck, yeah, it's gross. So the tweet in question. If I can find it, because I've been damn active as hell today. So this is the tweet in question. Here we go. So Mm -hmm. this tweet right here, it it was a response to an Australian guy. It was like a an article where an Australian guy broke into a house and then he immediately got graped by the homeowner, which is hilarious. So I just quote tweeted it and said, "Just letting you know that if you break into my home, I will indeed grape you." And that's what I got perma banned for right there. This simple tweet. Rest in peace. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, man, it's like uh, you just you just start over with, with, with another account run, ran by someone else. Yes, exactly. Not me. I would and, never do it again. Oh. And it's <laughs> yeah, in a in a few months you're you're back on your feet, man. That that's what happened to me. Yeah, yeah, you've been killing it, man. I saw you had I saw you were fourth on streaming for your Amazing Grace song. Oh yeah, uh, that awesome. that was insane. If you told me some time ago that well, I would be like charting with the likes of Guns N' Roses and Queen and ahead of Disturbed, ha <laughs> ha, Disturbed. Yeah, what a bunch but of yeah, yeah, <laughs> would have shit my pants. Yeah, dude, that's freaking awesome. That's like my dream. My dream is like writing music and people listening to and it. Now it's the time, man. The age oh, of the yeah. middleman is over. If an yes. idiot like me from a third world country did it, so like. Of course you can. So what you're saying is there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> there's a chance. There's a chance, man. Thank By the God. way, that that kind of that kind of tape on brick. Does seriously? It no, it doesn't work at all. That's how you that'll know. Be, they, yeah, that that they'll, they'll be out of there in like a couple hours. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's not gonna last very long. <laughs> but this is like an example. Okay, so my tweet, I was banned for inciting violence. I guess violence against the guy that breaks into my house, which I feel like is justified, but whatever. Leafy's just on the same damn tweet, by the way, said, kill them, which is literally (laughs) inciting violence. Just kill them. Yeah, which I agree with, but like, (laughs) still, why am I the one banned, damn it? And it's because I tweeted this out. I'm too big for it not to affect my income, and I'm too small for anyone to care. (laughs) It sucks. Yeah, it's kind of an easy target situation. Like you're 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 making you're making jokes about graping, which makes you like people can easily virtue signal about being your enemy. Yeah. If you, it, it's like, oh no, it's just a guy. It's it's just a guy talking about graping. It's not. It's not. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's an easy target situation. Yeah. If only I was trans, I would have got away with it. <laughs> there yeah. you go. I'm hey, now. A you can be. Yeah, you can be just for a while. Thick woman. Look, I got titties. <laughs> I can do it. Then I can just do whatever I want. No one, will, everybody will be cool with it. Jonathan Hurst says, "Thanks for all you do. Your streams give men the confidence they need to con- continue to reproduce." <laughs> hell, hell to the legs, ass fans. I appreciate you, Jonathan. Uh, I don't know how I do that, but I appreciate that. Uh, oh, Monkey Man says, "Is Dan gonna also bring you some heat?" Hey, Ooh, hey. Uh, no, you know what? I don't. I don't really, dude. I've. I'd like to go viral as hell on Twitter just to get banned again. It'd be great. There you it go. Hey, man, I, I, I can bring you back like in, w- with one clip, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> that went, how many <laughs> views? Did they have like 40 million or something? Uh, last time I checked, it was 13 million. Probably. Jesus. For, it's probably 14 by now. Oh God. All the. But yeah. The- I asked as first for the people yeah, at home that, judging yeah. me right now. I sent him a DM and I warned him. That it could bring him some heat. Yep. So he has well, been he warned. Said, yeah. he, said, <laughs> he, he was like so it. cool about it. He was like, <laughs> dude, go ahead. Do whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. <laughs> dude, that was the wildest. That was so wild. It was literally like I saw it everywhere for like three days. Yeah. And it's it spawned such an interesting topic. And then there was those people coming out like that usually are kind of on – the reasonable side of things shitting on those people you know what i'm saying like they were shitting on ass yeah like uh yeah. My, my buddy which good friend of mine and I, I love him but you know he was one of the people that came out uh the act man and he was shitting on ass and i feel like 
people are misconstruing the entire entire point. The point was you have escapism and every every like you're trying to just get away from the world, get away from Twitter, get away from your job. And the first thing you see when you fire up a new game is the same shit coming at you from every yeah. direction in some random space game. And you're just kind of you're tired of it. Like, you know what? I'm just tired yeah. of this. Man. That you know was the saying? whole point of my my my. My, all my tweets because that that was not my first tweet on the subject I, yeah. me and nina we were one of nina infinity we were one of the first saying publicly that we refunded the game uh she she gave it a chance after the pronouns pronouns thing yeah. but i didn't and i'm very unapologetic about it as soon as i saw it, it's like yeah a yeah. refund and it was the first game i refunded in my whole life First yeah. game I read. So I posted about it on Twitter and my original tweet got ratioed to hell. I got just like massacred. <laughs> yeah. And 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 I was thinking, see, as that could have been me. I was thinking of recording a short video myself, like just put on my phone and, and record a short video myself. But someone said on, on my comments, hey, you you're not you're not the you're not the only one pissed at, at this stuff. Asked made this great rant about it the other day, and and I, then I went to l look for it, and it was great. I thought it was epic. I thought it reflected exactly what I was feeling, not only regarding that game, but regarding the whole thing, the whole context, the whole uh, stupidity uh, getting in in our games, in our in our entertainment, in our comic books, in our movies, in yeah. our TV shows. It, ref it reflected all I was feeling very well. And I and then I sent asked that DM, and he was like, "Yeah, go ahead." And I did go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and it was, dude, it was wild as hell. It was wild it as was hell. Wild. And <clears throat> luckily, I don't care. So I don't play Bethesda games anyway because, you know, they the last ten years have kind of been kind of me. I didn't like Fallout Four that much, and I didn't like. But you like Oblivion, right? I love Oblivion. Oblivion's one of my yeah. favorite games ever. It's my favorite Elder Scrolls. Same. Believe it's just so beautiful. Yeah. It's so Dude, beautiful. Dude, my it was my first. My, a lot of people started with, with Morrowind and some some guys before that. Yeah. But uh Oblivion when that first came out, my brother my brother had played uh Morrowind before, but for me it was my first Elder Scrolls and it was like I don't believe video games had come that far. Yeah. I it, it, it was like a dream come true. I th that that first classic bethesda reveal moment when you leave the sort of dungeon you yeah. always start in sewer, yeah and you have the world at your feet for you to explore you see that distant tree out in the horizon you can go there it was like i don't believe a game like this exists it was like a dream come true so bethesda games are, are that the the whole thing wokeness in a bethesda game cuts close to the bone to me so yeah. that's that's why yeah. I, I took that very, very personally. Dude, it really does. It's yeah. luckily, like I said, I haven't played them in so long because this their their releases and also Elden Ring kind of. I've played a lot of from software games and Elden Ring mm -hmm. pretty much sealed the deal for me not to ever have to play like Bethesda games anymore. And the 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 formula hasn't really evolved. To be fair, um, yep. games are still. It, it's it still feels like you're playing Fallout from 2008. It's like really strange. Um, and if true. I wanted to play that, I'd just play Oblivion because Oblivion's fantastic. Dude, I'm I'm discovering new things in Oblivion and Skyrim. I know you hate Skyrim, but <laughs> I'm I'm discovering new things in those games to this day. To yeah. this day, it's like you have infinite content virtually. Yeah, and the crazy thing about Skyrim is Skyrim's like like uh, leaps and bounds better. Than everything that came after it. That's the crazy part. Is Skyrim yeah. is still a good game, but compared to everything else, and especially compared to Oblivion, because of course when Skyrim came out, I played it, I compared it all to Oblivion. And it just didn't feel Oblivion felt like I was playing my character, whereas Skyrim felt like I was playing as this Dragonborn pre-selected. I thing. totally get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It feels like a preset character rather than in oblivion you're just a blank slate you're a nobody you don't even know why you were arrested in skyrim too you, you you don't know exactly why you were arrested but you have that path laid down yep. in front of you you know believe you're just like 
You're a nobody. And the fun thing is that you remain a nobody because in Skyrim, when you find those little lore books that talk about the, the Oblivion Crisis, oh, when they mention the Oblivion game character, it's always like, oh, the, um, a mysterious warrior or something yeah. like, like that. So you go back to being a nobody yep. in the annals of history. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's so, so yeah, that's, that's really something that's skyrim it's when wild. went away from yeah i completely agree um inspector says hey camelot hope you have a great day have you ever try tried adding sake for fight milk i have not i would dude i'm down for anything uh, i've never doing, had sake i haven't either i need to go to japan it's, it's like awful. alcohol from rice get out of here <laughs> as long as it dude as long as it's not bad i've been drinking <laughs> a lot of whiskey lately and i just gotta love whiskey whiskey's the goat Love whiskey. Uh, Wicked Virtue, thank you. I appreciate you, baby. Thank you so much Wicked for hanging Virtue. out. Such a great person. Such a beautiful, yeah. beautiful woman. Uh, and my boy Big Mike says, I need to bring the chat to the dark side. Tits better than ass. Disagree, 100%. You can't be to that. <sighs> no. What, why, do we, why does one have to choose? No, I mean, why not both for sure? But if I had to choose, yeah. like if you had to chop one off, like I'm definitely being ass guy for sure. Yeah, I guess you can you, you, you can see what you're more forgiving of lacking. Yes. Yeah. I guess I, I guess I'm more forgiving of lacking tits. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, because like you can respect like big, small doesn't matter. Like the smallest. I you know I've hung out with girls that are like four foot eleven. They're just you know small framed girls, and they you know had almost no boobies, and it was totally fine. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, what if she had no ass? It was just two sticks coming out of a torso. I'd be like, get that, that makes away sense. from me. Oh, no. no. <laughs> bones and shit. I see two bones. No. I think it adds a strange masculine quality to, to, to the woman if, he, if she lacks ass. Yeah. But it, yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't happen when she lacks boobs. 100%. It's, she's even more feminine. Interesting. Almost. Yeah. Interesting. She's a little dainty. Yeah. Um, so that's how that is. Mewtwo. If they look at like Mewtwo, I'm down. Because Mewtwo is pretty thick. Pokemon, yeah, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful Mewtwo, man. Dude, I was trying to catch it on first generation Game Boy Pokemon Yellow. It's almost impossible, and I wasted my Master Ball in some dumb Pokemon that I didn't know. I didn't know there was only one Master Ball, so yeah, yeah fuck me, I guess. Yeah, and then you have to go in that weird dungeon. That's like yeah, amazing. you have to go all the way. It's yeah, it's and a, then you it's get a to nightmare. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to get all the 150. Pokemons of the yeah. first generation, uh, and I I had to buy all the three cartridges for that, and they're not expensive. I think I mean they're not cheap uh, nowadays anymore. But yeah, people told me, hey, you need to have friends to trade. So checkmate. I don't need friends. I can just buy all three. Yep. <laughs> so Dude, I I um yeah I I remember getting the Mewtwo, and I had the best ball that was not a Master Ball. And it still didn't work. And I was like, Yeah, it's the ultra ball, right? Yeah. And it didn't work. Yeah, and I, I think yeah. you only encounter. I have like one. 30 of those. Yeah. I have 30 ultra balls and it doesn't work. It's so sad. Because and I get his his health to the to the red and it doesn't work. Yeah, and you only encounter Mewtwo once, right? There's only one. If you kill it, you have to load your save. God. Absolutely insane. Yeah, I I I I screwed up pretty bad back then. But then again, yeah, that was when I was like nine years old or something or 10 years old. I bought Pokemon Yellow when I was like 10 and it was great. And then I haven't played one since because I'm a bad friend, I guess. Oh, wow. Yeah, I do I love them. Play it. They were great. I, I, I collect old games, as you, as you can see. It's one of, one of the things that makes uh, life beautiful for me. It's seriously, besides music, it's one of my favorite things in the world. Collect old retro games. I, I have, it. dude, I have a ton of PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 games. But then I stopped collecting them because after that, they were kind of like mass produced and not really interesting to yeah. collect. But I still have all my PlayStation 1 games, every one of them from, that I had when I was That's like awesome. years old. And they're all in great condition because I was really anal when I was a kid. And I was like super, don't touch my games. And uh, paid off. And they're expensive. I could resell them and make like yeah, two grand it's like a, 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 it's an investment. Yeah. If you, I games that I bought like two years ago for some reason the coof made the value of, of retro games go through the roof. Maybe because people 
had more time in, the, in their hands and, and started to feel nostalgic. But it's like games that I bought two years ago, almost triple price. Damn, dude. So at the same time, you're you're investing your money. Oh, or that. That's at least what I tell my mother. <laughs> <laughs> did you, dude? Speaking of the coof, you're in a completely different part of the world. How was how was that? How was the response where you were? Oh, dude, in my town we had curfews and oh shit. My God. And mask mandates, and I never wore a mask once. No. I was like, and I, I, and I, and you could tell the the police th didn't give a shit as well. Yeah. Because I would go like I, I would walk in the street without a mask, right beside a, a police officer, and they w wouldn't say anything. It's like who cares? The uh, the you you could tell that the police themselves was like, uh, who gives a shit? Yeah. But yeah, there were in in. On paper, there were curfews and mandates and all all that sort of shit. I couldn't go to the movies or watch uh, shows or anything like that without the vaccine. I think now that that dropped. Yeah. But yeah, it was was not pretty. And in, over here in Brazil, we don't have s stuff like uh, first and second amendment. Uh, more specifically, the first one. So people who were deemed uh fake news spreaders uh went to jail that sort of stuff <laughs> and, and 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 then <laughs> it, uh, and brazilian government has the authority to go to twitter and demand that twitter bans you even though that you even though you didn't infringe any twitter rules yeah. brazilian government has the authority to do that and it has happened a lot so the, uh, yeah it was ugly that's insane just so on my end of the spectrum, it was so there was like mandates for companies like Walmart, like mm -hmm. you had to wear a mask. You went, now I don't go to Walmart, so it didn't work, didn't you know affect me. But other than that, there was nothing. It was almost like nothing happened where I was because I'm from like the you know Alabama, like south of the U.S. Mm -hmm. And no one, I I saw probably four masks in a year in Alabama. Wow. And uh, I awesome. probably see more masks now than I did back then. And really, that's yeah. interesting. I guess because people like, you know, they, I guess they, it, they made them fit in. And now I do know a lot of people, especially like that one person on Twitter that we were just talking about, the trans furry <laughs> guy lady that had a fans Lee and had their little weird penis out. Um, they, they were wearing a mask in their profile picture and you can tell that they're ugly as That's thin. how you know. That's yeah. how you know. When you're, you're dealing with no. some deeply disturbed weirdo when they have a fucking mask on their profile picture. Yeah, and they're never fails. Like, yeah, they look like a goblin for sure. <laughs> Goofy ass <Gobbling>. goblin, <laughs> fucking goblin looking motherfucker. Yeah, and that's uh, those, those are the. People. No wonder you wish we're in another species. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, they're like, please God, can I can I be something else? Because I look like a nightmare. Because <laughs> I look like something else. Yeah, no, dude, that's <laughs> gross. Um, Spencer, that's insane. Hell, ask. Have you considered covering yeah. Power Wolf? I can almost hear a reverent of rats in your voice. Um, how can we help you defeat Gary? You <laughs> hey, make fake accounts. Subscribe. To <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yeah. Recently, recently, I gave Power Wolf another chance because I was uh, I was never a huge fan. I loved the instrumental, but I was I was never big on the vocals. But recently, I I gave it another chance, uh, and yeah, I. I can I see myself digging it more. I just have to to get used to it because I'm uh, uh, I worry a lot about the quality of my vocals, so that makes me very uh, stingy with vocals. But yeah, I can I can see myself digging it. I was doing some research on on, on a studio that I plan to to work with, which is Fascination Street Studios from. Uh, Sweden, they're from Sweden. What's up with yeah. those those northern countries like Sweden, N Norway, and Finland? The they have like uh, one metal band for every five citizens. Yeah, well, it's stuff like that. I was I was talking to Gus G on my show recently, and he said there is a there is one studio, and it's like in Gothenburg or something. I need to look it up. And he said, and I went and Googled it, and the dude that runs the studio has produced like every metal album that I like that I enjoy 
There's like hundreds. There you go. Yeah, it, it happens all the time. So I was doing research on that studio, Fascination Street Studios, and it was pretty much like that. Oh, they they produce this and this and that. So and and Power Wolf, that specific Power Wolf album that I forgot the name, uh, was one of those productions, and I enjoyed it quite a lot. So I can definitely see myself giving Power Wolf a, another chance. Yeah, dude. I get um, speaking of music. I always, dude. I'll get real like inspired and so i wrote a song the other day i wrote the bass the guitar i got the drum track down i had i i started doing like synth with midi controllers i got a real nice midi set up and i have a like a Dude, digital grand piano as well midi midi is like a, a, a there's no coming back yeah from, it's from, from, from the rabbit hole Dude, of I, MIDI. I literally so i have like an ak i have a a akg or ag key k it's like a huge goofy ass um, MIDI controller. And I like downloaded a serum, like bought it and downloaded it and went to the first preset, which was this, this weird, I forget what it's called. Um, a arpeggiator or oscillator mm -hmm. or something. And I just like pressed like some kind of, uh, like octave key. And it was just like, and I was like, well, this is yeah. great. Like, and it was the first thing. So the it, first preset. And yeah. it already did the, the, you, you have the ideas coming to your head yeah. already. And then you hit the second preset. It's like what? more ideas. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it, it, there's no coming back from that rabbit hole. My yeah. thing with MIDI is more orchestral instruments. I just yeah. love downloading orchestral VSTs yeah. and digital choirs. I, yeah. I'm working with a digital choir for, for a song I'm working in from, uh, it's called Oce Oceania, Oceani? Oceania, I think is how it I know what you're talking about. Cause I had a, I actually had a orchestral VST for a long time. On my uh, th old this one is choirs. Oh. It's like they, the, those choirs actually say words yeah with, uh, random words when you do the chord and so like it just looks like the real thing i have a real choir at the tip of my fingers it's insane mm. yeah i need that i need that bad it's i was awesome. told, i was working on this song and it's completely different style than i'm used to and it's like really dark and goofy and like bouncy and uh, i want like dance drums on it but i also want like blast beats in it there's all if, have to, if you had to categorize it in one style, what would, what would be close? Oh my god! To it? I don't even know. Um, it's it's I don't know, man. I don't even know what it would be called. It's 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 like dance metalcore. It's like the weird dance uh, metalcore. Yeah, it's like strange. It's a uh, it sounds awesome. It's like there's this band called Beast in Black. If you if I yes, didn't do power I, know. Chords, I love them. If I remove the power chords and I'm playing on like a seven string and drop A. That's kind of like how it is. Okay. So it's a, uh, it's kind of like that, um, and that's that's what I'm going for, kind of. But I also wrote this other song that I sent to Gus G. That is straight up power metal. Ah, uh, now you're talking. Now you're yeah, talking my thing, yeah. man. I'll I'll send it to you. Um, it, it's awesome. It, it's pretty wicked, but it's it's all over the place, and it's like seven minutes long, and I'm like, why did I do this? That's um, amazing. Yeah, and I, uh, I I didn't finish, I didn't do any of the lead guitar parts, but I finished everything else, and I didn't do any of the synth parts because I was in the middle of moving when I wrote it, um, and I just now came back to it. But then I wrote this other song, but then I get this like block where I, I'll write it, and then I don't want to finish it because I just can't like bring myself to finish it. It's really strange. I know how it is. Yeah, I have that problem sometimes too. I, ha I have a super easy time to starting stuff, starting songs, but yeah. then it's like... It works so much on a, on a song that you cannot stand to hear it anymore. And you yeah. Just don't, you just don't finish it. You think it t sounds bad. I'm like, this actually sounds terrible. Like, because yeah. you hear it like 9,000 times. I played the same freaking opening riff like a thousand times when I was trying to record some stuff. And now it doesn't sound good to me anymore. I'm like, oh, this is, sounds gross. I don't want this. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, that, that, that happens to me uh, recording vocals sometimes. Sometimes it's better go with the first take that you did, like with a little, a, a, it's a little bit faulty in some ways, but it was the first time you hit it and you, you, you got all your heart. But then in, the second time you record it, it has like 90% of heart. And then the third yeah. time, 80% of heart. And then by the th 100th time, it's just a lot, it's, it just sounds like a robot. Even yeah. though it may sound perfect technically, but it doesn't have any feeling anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how it is. And yeah. uh, I need to, 
I need, I need to really get on to it. Get on it, dogging on it. But I'm just I'm just bad at it. And I have so many ideas and then I never execute them. So that's and pretty much you right. do, you do your own mixes? Yeah. Um now I, yeah. I if you heard my first mix versus my most recent mix, it's night and day, but it, I still feel like it's uh, trash. Yo, we no. yeah, this we all been there and so like i'm i'm starting to be more open to outsourcing my mixes that's why i'm researching different studios and stuff like that because it consumes so much of you because you already have sort of an attachment to to the work because you made yeah. it in the first place so your mix might reflect some things that it shouldn't reflect be, because someone else approaching it with a clear mind and, and not not being in any way shape or form attached to it will have a much better uh approach technical approach to yeah it. yeah and you know unbiased because I mean? i'm always trying unbiased, to be biased yes. yeah i'm trying to mix the guitars louder because guitar is my per my preferred instrument So I'm mm -hmm. mixing the guitars louder and then you'll hear, I'll send it to, I remember I used to have a vocalist and I would send my mix to the vocalist or my, my stems to the vocalist and they would make the vocals so loud. And I'm yeah, like, my vocals are so loud, man. I can't hear anything else. Than, like, Dude. Yes. My first mixes in my channel, the vocals are super loud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like, some people grow used to that. And now when I mix it in, in actual regular levels, like, Oh, the vocals too, it's too low. It's yeah. like but some some people some people come to the to my channel like only only for Dan, not necessarily for the whole work for 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 the whole song. I just want to hear Dan, and it's like no, I'm I'm just part of it. I'm just yep. one of the elements then of the metal or orchestra that you're hearing. Yeah, it's good too. You did, you did. What did you do? You did uh rosanna by toto oh dude. that that's an old one yeah yeah uh, dude because it's my that's my favorite song on on piano to just jam out to really I love the piano dude like that God, I love let's it. make a metal version yeah dude dude i'm all about it i love i love the piano it's my favorite one of my favorite things the piano it just that you can play it really heavy like really heavy handed and it just uh -huh. just oh it's awesome i love that song um i love most of the most of uh Uh, Toto stuff. Toto, a lot yeah. of great because you don't realize it until you listen to like their greatest hits, and you're like, "Wow, I can't believe all these songs that I love. I didn't even know they were Toto." We all know Africa, yeah. is, but mm -hmm. <laughs> but anything else like Rosanna? God, what a great song! Yeah, I yeah. definitely have three Toto metal metal arrangements in my head that yeah. I just need to to I just need to bring it to the real world, which is uh, Africa, Rosanna. And I'm blanking on the third one. I'll I'll remember later as we yeah. as, as we talk. But yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, Toto. Don't I sell it? What is it? I'm pretty sure I sell it for all. I've, for all, yeah. It's a it's a cover of, of uh, the the ex singer of Camelot. I'm blanking on his name. Roy Can. Roy Kahn just came out of, out of nowhere uh, after like being retired for 10 years or or, yeah. or so, and he came with this single, sort of with with, uh, with religious overtones, and was was pretty cool. And I covered it when it came out. I'm pretty sure I sell that. Yeah, need to sell pretty everything. Sure I, sell I still make I still make like a dollar or a dollar to eight dollars off my old album that I put on spotify yeah and but that's that's how no you build your, your your passive income <laughs> yeah. once you have like 200 of those then yeah. it's like cool it's just one dollar but it's times 200 yeah and i uh i wrote a so i don't you have you've heard of not wish obviously yeah yep yeah so my last album was 100 like i was listening to only not wish at the time so everything i wrote was just sounded just like not wish and uh um, nice <laughs> it used to be the actually it is still like when i release videos it's the it's at the end it's my end screen it's like one of my goofy not wish songs um not wish sounding songs and uh I, i really love not wish and then that's the issue is that song i wrote that i'm trying to write like you know more heavy like drop a stuff i'm trying to get into that you know that dance metalcore thing i'm trying to because mm -hmm. i can hear it in my head i just can't freaking put it out there and the most recent song that I finished roughly is freaking, it, it always ends up sounding like Nightwish. 
every time. I have <laughs> an actually. Well, I can't bring it up because I'm banned off Twitter. No, fuck. Um, <laughs> I had this video. That's how, that's how you can tell something is so embedded on your musical personality that you yeah. cannot cannot avoid it. In my case, it's Manowar. All songs I write sound a little bit like Manowar in some sense because it's it's embedded into me. I listen so I listen to it so much that it's hard to avoid. So it starts to become part of you, and and, and I think there's no shame in, in that. Yeah, I'm trying to bring it up. So this is. It, I have it right here because I got banned on Twitter. So now it's not on my Twitter. Well, it's probably there, but it's banned. Um, but I wrote this little thing and I was, it was quite literally when I was trying to uh, come up with a new song and I was just playing with this MIDI keyboard that I just got. And uh, it always ends up sounding like some kind of weird, like not wish Scottish thing every single time. Scottish. Yeah, here I'll I'll pull it up here in a second if I can. There's a is there a download button? I guess I'll just I'll just yeah there it is. All right. Um, I would have just pulled it up on Twitter, but I can't. But uh, let me pull up the audio too. If this is even the right video, but it's you'll you'll hear exactly what I'm but, talking. But about. but you know that Streamyards fucks up the the audio yeah. quality, right? Yeah, those those bastards. Yeah. Um, but. You'll get the gist of it here in a second if I can find my window. Bro, I have so many windows open. Where am I? Oh, my God. Okay, here we go. So let me make sure there's no nudes. Okay. <laughs> you know how it is sometimes. That's good. Okay. Um, and then where is it? Uh, specific window. Here it is. All right. So it has a you'll, – you'll hear it if it plays, if you can hear it. It's very epic-y. You know what I'm saying? Like it's got a fantasy vibe. And then it goes up for like an octave. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what and that's Dude, what I that always... chord progression, that chord progression is so brave heart. Yeah. Like uh, why does this always happen to me? Yeah, oh. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, it could have been worse. You could have, you, you could have, you could have some shitty uh, style stuck in your head, but no, you have brave hard <laughs> slash night wish style. So yeah. there and, you go. Yeah, but then I like I need like a, a over the top vocalist, and I need all these people, and I'm like, man, I could just I if I if I was just making like grungy ass dance metalcore, I could just scream into the <laughs> mic and then just play some like goofy riffs and then put it out there. Dude, it's let's easier. talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay. I also, uh, I also, I also have a an idea for an, just this epic, futuristic song. I want to do an epic song, but getting away a little bit from the orchestral stuff and do something more like Blade Runner soundtrack. Yeah. Epic but futuristic. And I had this idea for a comedy, epic song, a comedy yeah. epic song, which is like in the and the story is like. And I plan to to get narrators. Gonna get Fear the Beard to do the nar narrations. Gonna have uh, voice actors with dialogue, and it's gonna be ten minutes longer or, or longer, but not so distant future. The uh, I don't know something like Super Biden three point oh three thousand is the cyborg president of the United <laughs> States of China. Yeah. And in the United States of China now, it's, it's it has been made illegal to be a, <laughs> to be a biological woman. Yeah, of course. Now, it, biological yeah. women are illegal. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and so, a group of adventurers heard about the legend of the woman with no pee pee or the girl with no pee pee. Oh no! Something like that. And they sh and they just go. I'll depart on an adventure to search for the girl, for the last girl with no pee pee to find out <laughs> if the legend was true. And I'm going to call it like something epic, like the legend of the last girl with no pee pee. Or the, <laughs> something like it. that. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's coming. One day, I, I had this idea in my mind for a long time. I want to do it. That sounds beautiful. Um, <laughs> lonely Kakapo says every single band that you mentioned um, and Dan are what I listen to when I'm writing, when I run out of videos and live streams. It's nice. just, 
we're all on the same page at least. Tony Sands, my boy, what's up, buddy? With a ten dollar super sticker, I appreciate you, man. Welcome back. I feel like it's been a while. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Sheldy says, Dan, I can't find Dawn over a new world anywhere to buy. Can you put it up for sale? I love it. Uh that one, that one, I think it's not, it's not available. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it up in, in. Uh oh, man, I eat too much steak. I'm blanking on all kinds of names now. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to put it up online. You're missing out, Dan. You're missing out on free money from Shelby <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah. I just thought people wouldn't be too much interested in that because it's just a straight-out cover. It's, it has nothing special about it. It's a Dragon Force song, and oh, I did it wow. exactly as it, as, it, as it is. Sometimes I like to do those lazy covers just, just because I like the song. Yeah. That's actually – so that's how I started YouTube. Um, was with guitar covers. And then, of course, I probably oh, really? did all of them like a long time ago when I started doing this. But yeah, my entire... On this same channel. This same channel. I created it in 2006. And I just put up guitar videos. That's awesome. For That's years. That's amazing. 2006. Years, and then, 2006 um, was as soon as Google bought it. Yep. It was right when yeah. it started like getting big. And yeah. I was putting up guitar videos. And then uh, in 20... 19 or 2018 i think is when i started doing this kind of thing and it took off immediately and i was like well i'm not doing guitar videos anymore um, <laughs> and also That's i just didn't cool, really man. have it in. I, I just want to write stuff now but then i i feel like I, I used so much effort to write the last album i did that it like sucked 10 years out of my life because that the, the whole process for me is like crippling mentally to like flesh yep. it all out it's brutal yeah yeah, and it's like, and then it become when you have such a long project, and I've been there, when you have such a long project, you start having so many other ideas yeah. for other projects, but you're stuck in this sort of creative constipation. Yeah. When you have that that one project that you cannot pass pass on, pass out. And, and, and it's like, it's holding your, your creative life back. Yeah, it sucks. That sounds, I've been it sounds like me right now because I have this one video, which is straight uh -huh. up power or this one song, which is power metal. And I'm like, man, I really want to get this done, you know, get Gus G on it, get all these people on it. And then I'm like, but I really, really want to work on the song I'm working on. And I just can't make myself do either because both are there. So I'm like, I just don't do either. You know, it's like this weird block. Yeah. And the, the solution I found, at least that works for me is just, just release it. If you think it's crap, release it anyway, release, release the crap because you, you can always it's not like you have a, a a record label telling you what to do. You can go back to that. You can make a remix or, yeah. or a remaster or even a rearrangement or just make the sound again from the ground up. Yep. You can do whatever you want. So just release it, move on. Maybe one day you go, you come back to it. That's true. That is true. Um, Silent Bob says, have any of you guys ever listened to Ghost? If Dan were to cover one of his songs, Dance Macabre. 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 I can't I can't say that word. Macabre. I Macabre. Think Macabre. Yeah, it might be a good fit. Thank you, Silent Bob. I appreciate you. Cool. I've listened to Ghost yeah. before. Yeah. There's one ghost song on my gym playlist. I have I have to to do my homework on Ghost. But yeah, I I hear I hear requests all the time about Ghost. Yeah. Apparently people love love ghosts. I hear about it all the time. Matt yeah. Matt himself says in a world where only penis woman exists follows the adventures of galactic pioneers that wish to find the legendary taco woman there you go <laughs> <laughs> that's david hater narrating <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like girl could, girl i can see it now you could do that immediately you could put that in a song too like in like it's reverb state where you hear like a like some kind of transponder or some kind of like transmission and it's like colonel <laughs> i know exactly where she is dude that's a great impression <laughs> shit that's awesome i know where she is <laughs> it's like snake don't forget you might be blinded no one's ever seen this before yes <laughs> what do you think she might hypnotize you <laughs> i've never seen one before <laughs> Oh, you, like uh, this intense, awesome. this intense need to like reproduce immediately when you see the actual woman. Yeah, Legend <laughs> of the Last Lady. Otacon, I'm trying not to look at her, but I just <laughs> my pants are coming off. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a tractor beam. Come on, Snake, get a hold of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> just don't look at her, Snake. 
I don't can't. look at her. I can't help it. Oh my god. <laughs> her tits are huge. <laughs> Not even looking at her today. <laughs> yeah. That'd be hilarious. Just snake. Snake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Damn. beautiful. Um, <laughs> Dan, the legend of the last lady. Thank you, Joe, the bard. There that would actually go. that would be a title you could sell to people, and they wouldn't even know exactly it's about until the they open it up. Legend of the last lady. Oh, what is this? It sounds great. It sounds epic. Turns it on. A hilarious <laughs> joke about like how women can't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you, Joe. <laughs> Giant killer. You're gonna have to make a music video of that one. Absolutely. I take my shirt off. Have a bandana on. Hey, yeah, dude. I'm like sneaking around like with guards everywhere. I have an AK-47 <laughs> trying to find where they kept the last lady. Yeah. Be great. I know cardboard boxes. Yeah. <laughs> What's that box doing here? <laughs> Grifty says hashtag free Camelot. Also, how did you end up fighting with the furry man? Oh, yeah. You started to. All I did. Start. Grifty. Look, Grifty, this is what happened. Okay. This is all that happened it was this goofy furry. By the way, Michaela Thomas, I love you. Um, this furry posted this goofy ass thing on Twitter. And for some odd reason, look, the trans movement is whatever. Okay. It's whatever. Who cares? Not a big deal. Like as long as you're an adult, I really don't care. Just don't bring, don't bring me into it. I don't want to be involved. But mm -hmm. anyways, that being Leave children said, alone. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's, yeah. that's like my only ask. Just don't bring children into this. It's so easy. I Agreed. feel like, but they just have to do it. They just have to do it. Um, so this is this is the original post, we and need to reproduce. <laughs> the, and it's this uh, popular furry called a uh, blue wolf, blue. Popular furry. What, popular. what a funny. Popular persona. <laughs> just a funny combination of words. Yeah. Sorry. Really. And uh, it says I put up posters for trans rights around my town to fight against transphobia, and. It's completely two completely opposite things. Trans rights or human rights, and then a random furry. Why is the furry there? The, <laughs> are, is a furry trans? Like, is this to assume that all furries are trans? I don't know. It's just a freaking, it's a furry picture. I think that was an attempt of brand, on branding. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it was so unfortunate because, like, you have the word human right beside this animal with tits. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So, yeah. It's what it is. And it's, it's wild. It's, I basically commented on it and I was like, you are co-opting a movement and putting a furry in there with no context. And it, I feel like it would probably do better to just have trans rights with our human rights without the goofy furry in it. Cause you're just being narcissistic. Cause you want to put your own fursona on the flyer. That's exactly. the only reason you did it. And of course they started fighting with me, which is fine. And uh, then of course I, people started mass reporting my account. My account gets banned immediately. That's kind of what happened. Ah, uh, so. damn. Those, and you, yeah. it's because you they're poked, the... You, you poked the hornet's nest. I poked the nest of the you, most protected class of people that exist. Yeah, you poked the nest reason. of some creature, for sure. <laughs> some, <laughs> some creature got me. <laughs> God, yeah. those bastards, man. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it, dude, it's been, it's been wild as hell. And I, I, I filed an appeal with it, and the appeal got immediately rejected. It was like we manually reviewed it. And I'm like, dude, that I sent that appeal seven seconds ago. What do you mean you Damn. manually reviewed it? So Wow. They were they were waiting for your appeal. The, there was like the, <laughs> a blue haired <laughs> intern just on, on your account there. He's gonna send. He's gonna send. Ha ha! No. Yeah, no, absolutely not. We love trans. <laughs> and I'm like, look, for one, this has nothing to do with trans people. And also that same furry, quite literally, the same person, blue folf was advocating for like uh having sex with children like in a tweet dude that it's, it's hard to me not to have an emotional reaction it's hard it may it? drive me to say stupid stuff on on, on youtube i said when i see I, that <laughs> my editor yelled at me the other day because in a video um i got really emotionally charged i don't care about a lot of stuff but i care about one thing and that's just the innocence of children leave them alone and I got, you know, kind of pissed off in this video and I said something to the form of um, everyone that is attributing to this cause 
needs to be killed immediately and their deaths need to be so horrifying that it reverberates through the millennia so we never make this mistake again and he and in minecraft there you go. by the way uh, on the stream <laughs> and um my editor like cl- he edited it out and messaged me and he's like you probably shouldn't say shit like this on youtube he's like you uh, he's like i don't you know it doesn't matter I- i'm not against what you say i agree with you but you know if you get banned on youtube you're fucked and i'm like yeah that's true i will lose 95 percent of my income so that would suck. Yeah, <laughs> man. But but yeah, uh, I'm a politically I'm an anarcho capitalist. I I I'm not a huge fan of death penalty at all. But those people make me consider rethink, rethinking it. Agree. Agree. Rethinking yeah. it. And maybe I'm not I'm I'm not entirely against death penalty. I'm I'm against death penalty dealt by the state. Yeah. It should be just us. We should yeah. get to do it. Like, yeah, if, if, yeah. If I if I catch some motherfucker with with my daughter, you better believe I'm on the news next day. Yeah, and it's just I'm on the news wearing orange next day and with yeah. a smile on my face. Yeah, hundred percent. It's like if somebody broke into my mom's house, yeah, and, and killed my mother, I should have every right. If you know, it's it's irrefutable. The evidence is irrefutable. I have, I should have every right to find the person and chop their head off. And, and and face no legal repercussion, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Just that, that, no, no, no. I, I I don't think that's that's absurd. I don't think that's ab- an absurd thing to say. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Speaking of absurd, Magnum North <laughs> says, "What I like to do when I mix is turn down the master to a low level, then adjust the tracks to my liking. Usually, gets rid of tracks that are out of pocket. Also, listen on multiple different speakers and headphones. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at um, when I'm mixing and." Uh, it's gotten to the point where I'm like, you know what? I'd pay somebody a thousand dollars to just make this sound great. <laughs> to be that's fair. where I am. That's where I am at. Yeah. That it's like it's the guy has been doing it for his whole life, and he's probably gonna do what I will do in one month. He's gonna do in two hours. Yeah, exactly. And it takes me yeah. so long. And it's to gonna get it sound right. ten times better. Yeah, and then I'll listen to it for a week and think it sounds great, and then I'll come back to it and I'm like, this sounds awful, and I'll, I want to adjust everything again. And I'm like, I need somebody that will do it. And not know because it's it's almost like I build cars. Context, you know, I race, and when I started racing, I used my own cars before I started racing for teams and stuff. And you would take a car completely apart, and then you're putting stuff back together. But in the back of your mind, when you're driving, when you're doing anything, you know exactly what you did, and you worry about it. You worry about mm. the slight adjustments you've made. If I just get a team, if I'm at the team and I'm like, hey, the car's loose off the corner <clears throat> and they go and start fucking working on it, I'll just go in the trailer and start drinking like and hydrating. I don't worry about it. Therefore, when I'm in the car, I don't worry about any of that shit. Now, if I'm adjusting certain like parameters, Perfect. like in a yeah. certain hertz range and I'm trying to fucking change shit. Yeah. I'll always know what I did, which I feel That's like I'll the always perfect analogy. About. Yeah. You know and you start and you start making up shit. Oh, maybe that, that maybe that snare that I adjusted in this in this other way, maybe it's not sounding good anymore because of what I did. So, but when you when you get the whole product from another person, you're just like you you yourself have now an unbiased view yeah. of that work because it got out of your hands, it got into someone else's hands, and now it's back to you. But now you you don't know the details of what they did, so you're just like you will you will you will purely judge it if it sounds good or not. Yeah, exactly. Because I think if yeah. if I adjust cert- something in the high in the high range, I'll always hear it when I'm playing it back. It's like, oh, that's I don't know, man. It's like it's kind of like splitting my head with how high pitched this certain frequency is. But if I didn't know it was there, I probably wouldn't even notice it, and it would probably complement what's going on. But I'm too exactly you know what I'm saying too bassy, too low range, cutting out mids, all that goofy shit. So yeah, Magnum Norris, thank you for your orange boy. By the way, I appreciate you. You're goaded. Yeah. I love you. And Thanks. I have a problem. I, I, what he said about uh, turning down the master fader. I have a I have a huge problem with mixing in super loud volumes because yeah. I'm, I'm a metal guy. So I want to hear my songs in, in in the volume that I enjoy listening to music on my day to day basis. Yes. So that ends up fucking up my hearing at, at the end of the day. I'm I'm with my 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 hearing feels feels tired i feel tired mentally and 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 yeah that diminishes my my productive hours greatly yeah i uh i mix really loud <laughs> yeah i'm like i have headphones on it's just like kill just going headphones. Hard, so. yeah yeah i uh 
that's probably something I shouldn't do. And also, I have studio monitors in my studio that I've used. Mm -hmm. and you just use all kinds of things. Thank you again, Magnus. Norris. Tumi becomes a member. I appreciate you, Tumi. Mm -hmm. I have studio monitors too, but no matter what I do, I need to hire someone to do this. I cannot get my room sound to be completely flat. Yeah. My room sound, there's always some, some low frequency resonating a little bit more. So I end up always uh, going to the headphones for a truly flat sound. Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, that's why I'm like, I do a lot of stuff. Maybe I should just send all this shit off. Exactly. Shit. Instead just of being, yeah. yeah, like breaking walls in my house and try to modify studios and stuff. Why can't I just pay a thousand bucks to some guy to do it? Yeah, exactly. And that I think the issue is finding somebody that can do it. I, I've like searched Google and stuff and I'm like, can't find anything. And it's a know. huge matter of trust. Yeah. Because your song is like your baby. You're not going to yeah. trust your baby to, to, to some random weirdo. You have to find someone that, hey, they, they, uh, this guy makes this song here that I love that I wanted to sound like. So this is the guy. But you, what you do when, when you are at the start of your career and you don't, you don't have any money, you start making compromises. And then you start becoming... Uh, disenchanted with the whole thing because you had to you had to hire this random guy for very cheap he made a shitty job and now you're like oh okay so if i want to do something well done i gotta do it myself but that's not actually true it's just because you hired someone cheap no yep. exactly so yeah it's hard to overcome that that trust issue trusting someone with your baby with your song that you worked so hard on because of that that sort of those sort of experiences what do you so what what uh what instruments do you play? Do you play any instruments? I play a little bit of everything, just enough to understand how the instrument works, but I wouldn't be able to perform any of them live, for example. It's right. just I know the theory, I know how to write for for it, but I wouldn't perform it live and anything besides singing. Yeah, it, um well maybe maybe the harmonica. Maybe the harmonica. Yeah. I would. I uh, I would be too nervous to perform live. I feel like, <laughs> like when it comes to guitar, because, like I've you know I've played guitar, piano, bass, all that stuff my entire life. But I would. I, the last time I played a live show, I was eighteen, and that, oh, like wow. that's the last time. I How played old a live. are you? I'm thirty three. Oh, you're my age. Yeah, we're the same guy. Yeah, same guy. It's just same from different people. parts of the world. Um, yes. But yeah, um, I would have to, I would have to really get the barons up. I've been doing live shows with like Nick Ricada, like kind of like comedy shows, and I kind of got used to those. But yeah, I feel like I would screw up. I, mean, I, I would be so worried about messing up, like playing live. I just use yeah, back. I and think back. I got pretty good at turning myself off when I'm at the stage. But just before it, before I, 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 I go on stage, it's like a, a, I'm a pile of nerves. Yeah. But once I'm there. It's like, okay, here, here I take my mask off. Here, here's, is where I can be me. Those people are here to, to, to see me for who I am. Dude, I made a show the, the, not the other day, it was like in 2019. And I, I was wearing my, sh my, my don't tread on me shirt. Yeah. And I always get shit for that in my, my YouTube videos. But, but this show I did in North, North. Northeastern Brazil in 2019, there are people screaming from the crowd, taxation is theft, taxation yeah, is dude. theft, as soon as they saw my shirt. So it's like, yeah, the people who got out of their houses, get out of the, got out of their homes to see you there, those are the people you can trust. Of, of course, there, there, there can be like always situations, unpleasant situations as some hater got there for, for some reason, but those are... Those are extremely rare in my anecdotal experience. It's, those are the people who will stick by you. The, those people who paid actual money for a ticket to see you. Those people are there for you and, and they, they stick by you. And those are the ones you, you, you can feel free to just be yourself in front of them. Yeah. Sweet. It's pretty yeah. cool. I, I, I would like that. It's still like... I, t I told Gus G the same shit. Like my dream was to like tour and play music and then YouTube happened and I just do this. And this is what I ended up doing instead. Um, 
And uh, then my other dream was to race. And then I somehow started doing that full time, which is, I don't even know how I fell into that. It just, I, I networked a lot and then met people. That's um, amazing, man. Congrats. This I is a huge deal. It's awesome. But I was like, yeah. man, I, I wish I was doing music. <laughs> I kind of wish I was doing right. music. Right. Because that's like, that's the, that's my thing. I, I love, love playing music. And uh, dude, there's still time. Yeah. There's oh, yeah. Time. For sure. Dude, uh, what is it? Cowboys from Kell came out when Dime was like 31, like the Pantera album. Uh -huh. He was like almost my age when the their biggest and well technically first technically their first album uh came out and it was huge. Yeah. I'm like shit, I have I have plenty of time. And I have for ideas. Sure. I have a lot of ideas. No, and, and and for for guitar players, like even more, because singers have especially metal singers have uh relatively short career compared to singers of other styles. But you see metal guitar players playing like at 70 years old yeah they're still going somehow yeah um molly's mom says dan bask more fearless work please they're oh cool fired. i have a second album completely written but yeah i don't i don't think i'm gonna start that for a while yet i have a bunch of stuff in line first but it's coming one day it's already written what is Fearless exactly? Fearless is my band that I have with my buddies, my, oh, my okay. with my brother and two other childhood friends. It's a sort of a power metal, symphonic power metal, just good old cheesy symphonic power metal. A lot, lots of speed, lots of uh, of double bass drums, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's think of think of Man of War meets Rhapsody of Fire meets Blind Guardian. So yeah, uh, but it's I I I feel and the guys agree with me that doing doing the whole music thing as a band it's not the same thing as before, like in the eighties and nineties and even early two thousands because just depending on other people to to do stuff is just it's just annoying nowadays that you can yeah. do stuff by yourself and it's like we we get together on very special occasions to do stuff when we feel like it, when we feel like it will be fun, not as a job, not as an obligation. The, the job part of the music is individual for all of us. All of us, all the four of us make a living with music, but it's with individual projects that don't depend on one another. Right. Yeah. Um, I, uh, and I really wish I could get something going. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a track uh, after this show, and you you tell me what you think. Let's um, hear it. Let's so hear it's, it for it's, sure. It's kind of kind of all over the place. Uh, by the way, guys, we're 40 locks away from the overall goal already. Somehow, I'm just nice. an hour into this show, um, so we're 40 locks away from the goal. We are 319 from Naked Snake, and I will be streaming on Locals after this. By the way, I'm running a deal on Locals right now. Ten dollars uh, off the entire year. Locals membership. Nice. So we'll be doing a local show directly after this on my locals channel, an exclusive stream. So get the hell on it, diggity dog on it. Very, very important. And thank you, Vixen, as well. Um, very old time viewer member for 14 months. Man, nice. um, so speaking Portuguese, huh? Tell me, uh, Dan, um, because uh, I've been meaning to ask this, but we keep talking about other stuff because uh, I ramble a lot. What? Where did all this start? Because, like you know, you've been on FNT. You did their you did their song as well, right? Yeah, I did yeah. that intro song. Yeah, yeah. You've done a lot of stuff. When where did it start? Like, how did you become, you know, in the realm of content creation and like meet all these people? Like, how did exactly did it start? Well, I always sort of had a dream to, uh, uh, of working with music, of make make a living with music. But as most people in the back in the 2000s and 90s, I thought making a living with music dependent on some sort of magical str extreme struck of luck that someone would discover you and someone would find out about you and give you the opportunity. A middleman. Yeah. Pretty much a middleman would find me and I, I, would, I just needed to work on my, on my skills, just work on, my, on, on the art part of the music business, not, not worry about the business part of the music business. And someone one day would discover me and I would be set. So what I did is to, I, I started trying to make, in, make it in music through that road. I recorded an album with my band Fearless and 
we we exhausted our, our our little budget like we were in our early early 20s we didn't have any money but the little money we had we exhausted in producing that album and i started to to send it to managing companies record labels and, and agencies and either nobody wanted it or the few who wanted it were offering like some stupidly disadvantageous d deal for us. Yeah. Like, I remember that particular contract that offered us 12.5% of album sales. Yeah. We'll get 12.5% of our own album sales. That that is that is less than YouTube's cut yeah. on super chats. Yeah. So that was insane. I, I remember this particular call I had uh, uh, with this very, very big record label owner that I still admire a lot. The guy has been an inspiration to me. I, I cannot say the, the, the actual name because I, I'm under NDA from that conversation and, and from the negotiation of the deal. But I can I I can say what he what he said to me one day. I had 5000 subscribers on my channel. Right. during this whole ordeal and I was talking to him and I said hey but trying to negotiate a better deal hey I, I I'm bringing an audience to the deal I have 5,000 people in my channel who, who trust me who enjoy my content and he's like what you don't have an audience that's that's not an audience you don't have any audience it's like damn well for the purport the, given the proportions is kind of right I, even though I value greatly those first 5,000 people, it's yeah. not enough to, to, to bend a record deal in my favor. So I, I was like, damn, I never forgot about that. So, and, and like now I have more subscribers in my channel than their biggest band of that, yeah. that same record label. And it's been what? It's been seven or eight years since that conversation probably seven years so yeah now i'm now my youtube channel is bigger than the channel of their biggest band yeah so that that's pretty cool so but it, it was during that that negotiation phase that i realized okay maybe that whole record deal stuff is not for me and <clears throat> uh that the that whole self-reflection that i was doing culminated also in, in my dad passing away in 2017 from cancer and i was like oh my god my dad passed away and i'm and i'm this broken motherfucker that can't even pay rent uh i i had to like ask for help i asked my mother for help to to buy shoes to buy clothes and that sort of stuff i was <clears throat> teaching singer uh, as a vocal coach, and I, and I was also washing cars and and cleaning, cleaning houses from 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 relatives. It, it, it was like, damn! And my my father passed away, not even being able to see his son being able to pay rent. So it was like, that's it. Fuck it. I'm gonna try this YouTube thing. It's gonna be my probably my last try to make it in in, in music. So. That's that's was when I started to upload with n no failure, one song a week. One, no matter what, I would upload. I would completely produce and, and direct one vi music video a week, and so I did for about three years, from 2017 to 2020. Then on 2020, the the whole Witcher thing happened. Yeah. My first viral song was Toss a Coin to Your Witcher. And then uh, from there, it was like uh, it became a lot more easy. And it's been a, an amazing ride. And then in 2020, uh, uh, I, I got to meet the guys, the, the Friday Night Tights guys. And then I made their, their, their intro. It was like it's been amazing. But it was really in 2020 that things started to to go well but but before that it was about three years without touching boobies without <laughs> without playing metal gear solid 
with Alna and anything. So, yeah, uh, but it was all worth it. It was all very much worth it, and I love this gig. It's fantastic. I can, I can upload only when I want to now because I've, I was able to build a catalog. I have almost 250 songs, and once you, the beauty of doing evergreen content is that it keeps generating yeah. passive income, and it just ac accumulates. So yeah, now I'm at, I'm at a point that I can, I can release songs only songs that I'm that I'm really passionate about releasing. Don't need to hunt for viral content stuff anymore. Even though some songs end up being viral, but it, it's it it comes from a true place. It comes from the heart. It's songs that I really enjoy doing. And I think people can tell. People end up being able to 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 tell when you, you're doing it just for the virality as uh, in, in opposition to being something that you're really passionate about. Yeah. It's, Man, it's been a fantastic ride. Dude, it's wild because like you said a lot of things that happened with me. I, um, I was you know, working, you know, at a normal job, uh, Walmart. And, um, I, my, my wife left in 2016, my ex-wife long time ago. And I was kind of just working this dead end job. And it was, it got to, it was like, I think middle of 2018. <clears throat> and I was like, I think I'm going to actually like give YouTube like a real shot, like a real shot, upload two videos a week. Um, and see if, you know, something, you know, can come out of it. And I did it for six months, like straight. And no one was watching, by the way. Like no one was watching. And uh, I was like, okay, whatever. You know, I gave it my best shot. Because, you know, th I thought the most important thing about YouTube was probably if I'm consistent, the algorithm will register that I'm consistent and start, you know, recommending my channel. So um, I gave up and it was literally like a week or, or two after I gave up. Um, I just started getting notifications one night. And I like looked at my phone and I pretty much refreshed over the course of a day and went from like 200 subs to 30,000 because Dang. one video just got a million views overnight. And what was the um, video about? Just me talking about working at GameStop. Like I, I worked at GameStop for 11 years and uh, I just made a video talking about it. And for some odd reason, that video went nuclear. And that's insane. I, that's then this is what I've been doing ever since. I didn't, I, you know, this is what I do it full time. I do four four shows a week. Um, try to do two videos a week, and it all it now the this has been the big best year so far by by, by far. Um, but there was like a two year period where I was like, I don't know if this is gonna work out because just views died and the stream views died. All of it just went. Oh, just okay. Out. And then so now, you had ups and downs. Yeah. In and interesting. Yeah. Now I'm kind of like in this really nice stable zone, but it was, it's. I feel like. YouTube is way more straightforward and easier if you know what you're doing. Like a lot of people want to want to do YouTube or, mm -hmm. you know, or some form of content creation and they will build all these ideas and then they'll put out one video or two videos and never do anything again. Oh dude, I've seen it time and time yeah. again. And you, like you said, you again. put out a video, you put out a song a week and you just kept doing it yeah. and eventually For 3 years yeah yeah eventually youtube's like damn this dude's putting a lot of shit out there and it cross referenced some keyword and pushed one of your videos and that and that just went it went to the moon um and a lot of people they just give up or they don't even start that's the biggest thing a lot of people don't even start yeah right so yeah and also they don't take advantage of the small successes because i i was already living making a living out of youtube with 50,000 subscribers it is possible. You don't yeah. need to, to have a huge viral channel to make a, a living uh, out of YouTube. If you know how to monetize the little audience you have and, it's, and it comes from a, a, a real place, you're not trying to scam anybody and, and stuff, yeah. you can totally do it. Yeah, it was. I think I, I got fired from my job at, I think I had like 47K or 50K subs when I got fired from my job because I had already made a video about Walmart. Um, and it was just talking about the negative aspects of Walmart, you know. Right. And I worked there at the time. And as soon as my my, my YouTube blew up, because, you know, when, when it starts blowing up, it's everywhere. For like, YouTube plasters it everywhere for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And it didn't take but two weeks before my my regional director, like, called me 
and was like, yeah, they found your YouTube. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I got fired the next day. <laughs> You're talking shit on Walmart. We don't yeah. have Walmarts here in Brazil, but I, I heard about it. People calling it shit mark. Yeah. It's, yeah. It doesn't sound fun. Yeah, it's an awful place to work. But yeah, so I got fired and I was like, well, I guess I'm doing this YouTube thing and it's just really worked out. Um, not 800K awesome. working out. Like you've been killing it. It's freaking awesome. Oh, dude, thank you. I think I'm in a, I'm in a very fortunate place because music is sort of like, I don't have that sort of ups and downs. It's just like, if you just keep doing it, that's why you have to do it, man. That, if I were you, I would create an entirely new channel for your music aspirations. Yeah. Because with music on YouTube, if you do good stuff and you make some clickbaity viral stuff once in a while in the beginning, while you cannot, when you cannot like, you don't have a big enough portfolio and yeah. a big enough audience for your music. In the beginning, you you, you need to do some vir viral clickbaity stuff, and there's no shame on that. But you you're in this very fortunate place where shit just starts piling up. You start building your portfolio, and people who find one of your vital vi viral videos later down the road will see all your other. 100 videos yeah back then when, when you didn't have any audience but now those videos are valuable to all those new people that you're bringing from that new recent viral video so things are just accumulating and, and the trajectory is always upwards so the you, you and you don't you're not subjected to those ups and downs from from content that it can it's like the 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 value of the content is momentary for when you reporting on news or talking about stuff that is relevant on, only during a certain period of time music yeah. is not like that it will i i still make tons of money from from music that i released five years ago yeah so that's i i think you should make a, uh, a new channel for your how, music stuff how so how does when you so you have like 20 4 million, 27 million views on uh, The Witcher. Toss, Toss, Toss coin your Witcher. I, I think that's it. Do you, Maybe. so do they have, do they do a copyright claim on that? How does that work? For, yeah, believe it or not, that video hasn't been even claimed as a cover. I think Damn. because I, I, I did it so differently. Because you know how the cover thing works on yeah. YouTube, right? Uh, for the people at home who may not know, YouTube has this very cool system because I say it's very cool because before that you couldn't monetize covers at all. I some probably my first 20 videos I I made zero money no. with them. But now there's this really cool system that where they copyright claim your stuff but you don't lose revenue. Just a percentage of the revenue goes to to the author of the right. song. So that's the the cover copyright claim. And I didn't even get one of those. On, on that video i think it's because i make i made the song so different yeah that they couldn't tell damn well that so, worked yeah. out. <laughs> and, and i i also got a ton of money from the amazing grace cover because it's in the public domain oh so wow. there there yeah. was no and that gave me an idea i may want to do like an entire album of those sort of old school like 300 year old christian hymns first because I, I i like them i genuinely like them and i always in in church when i when i was a kid i, I was always imagining how would that sound with a badass rock guitar that's uh that that's something that always permeated my my create creative mind but also because i i don't have to share that with anybody not on youtube not when i'm releasing it on, on spotify and stuff it's 100 percent mine that's pretty awesome. So I might, I might just do That's that. That's what you need to do, yeah. And also yeah. the le the legend of the last lady, the legend of the last lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tristan says, "Got my biometrics taken today. Blood sugar, cholesterol, blood pressure, all great. I'm just a little fat. That's good. Now, okay. if you were not fat, you'd be even better, Tristan. Need to a get off. Fat is good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> extremely fat is not. Yeah, I have a but little bit of go. fat at my at my lower stomach." It's like this shit I cannot get rid of. Like Yeah, me too, man. It's like I'm trying I'm trying to cut, but I've been cutting for like 6 months. And it's like uh. I have to get down to 8% body fat to lose my lower stomach. I have to get so sh I'll have abs, like shredded abs that are veiny and I'll still have this little thing at the bottom. It's freaking What are your 
<laughs> what are you what is your current body fat level oh i have no idea probably like 17 percent. yeah i i i guess i might i'm near that too because i have one of those uh uh scales that what is the name it's a it's a type of scale that sends an a, a, a electric signal through your body and estimates wow. your your cool. yeah it's cool uh, I f I'm blanking on the name anyway, but it's only an estimate. You, it, it doesn't tell you really what it is, but you can use it as a to, to have a, a ballpark idea. And uh, I, I'm trying I'm trying to shred the, the those body fat percentage points. But yeah, man, dude, it's, it's so we have no I have like no body fat on my upper body, like at all, like. But my this is yeah. all my lower. Stuff. I have a little bit of tits. Well, I, I have a is. lot of tits. All I'm all tits, <laughs> just nothing but them. Um, speaking of all tits, Matt himself says <laughs> make a metal disc track once every two weeks for the news cycle you're covering at the time. You could. I was actually hey. thinking about doing a, a disc track for GameStop years ago, and then I just never did it because I'm lazy. Thank you, Matt. Another gold boy. I appreciate you, my friend. Um, and Torgo, the white as. Oh. You would print money with public domain heavy metal covers with old Christian music. That's true. There you go. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna get true. all the. Uh, I'm cornering, as Gary says, I'm cornering the seventy-year-old Christian women market. That's the best one. The, <laughs> yeah, they they'll give you. You can. They're the ones that give uh, their credit card they, numbers. They to donate rent. a lot. They donate a freaking lot. Yeah, and if you call one, you could cold call old people and be like, "Hey, uh." Your PC's messed up. And they'll be like, I don't even have a PC. And you're like, well, it's messed up. I need your credit card number. And they'll be like, all right. <laughs> yeah. They'll do it. It's crazy. Dude, Open, man, yeah. But also at the same time, I don't know if you if, if you have similar problems, but some of those old ladies can get really possessive, in spe especially if they start supporting you with a lot of money. Back when I had Patreon, dude, it was it was a genuine problem because when when my my channel blew up i started to have less time to respond to individual dms yeah. do they got like super freaking like abnormally mad so Dude, I, uh, I experience that now all the time i'll yeah. really get mad at me because i don't respond to a dm like it happens all the time to me dude and, it, and it's always those like lonely overweight middle-aged ladies it's like dudes don't do that attractive chicks don't do that it's always the same it's the same pattern i had this i had this chick that moved like uh a thousand kilo kilometers do you know what a kilo kilometer yeah. is yeah a thousand kilometers cross country to my neighborhood oh my god she moved to my neighborhood she found out somehow where i lived and she moved to my neighborhood oh it's my like god. Why isn't it an attractive girl? Yeah. Why is it <laughs> it's like, you don't understand, woman. Look at no me. No attractive girl does that. Not a single one. They're all goblins. It's always yes, the goblins. It's, yes. it's, it's always goblin ass bitches. It's never <laughs> Dude, every time, every time I'll see a girl and she'll message me. She'll be in my DMs and her profile picture is beautiful. And I'll, I'll talk to her and then she'll send me a picture. And it turns out her profile picture was from 1992. And I'm like, bam! Every or it's like everything. her favorite actress that she yeah. wishes he, she was. But yeah, it's do do you have chicks like using your DMs as a freaking insanity diary? Yes, of sorts, dude. Yes. God, I had a I had a girl one time. She was like, I would I'll talk to almost anybody. Like I, I don't mind. It's fun for me. Um, but I'll people I'll talk and they'll give me talking back and forth and. You know, so obviously, sometimes I'll be, I'll be at a race or this week. Um, it, by the way, guys, if you don't know, Saturday, the sixteenth, I'll be doing a live show in Nashville with Nick Ricada and Dick Matterson. Oh, nice. Um, the event brought page will be posted in the chat in a second. By the way, for to buy tickets for that. But, um, yeah, dude, I'll be, I'll be busy a lot of the time, and I won't respond to a DM of one of these ladies that are <laughs> that are talking that are like talking about how. You know they're depressed and they're like in their forties now, and I'm all, yeah. I'm just being super nice, having a good time, and they do they get so pissed. They're like, you know, I guess you're not going to talk to me anymore. I guess you know you're not as genuine as I thought you were. You're not the dude. The that's a classic. That I you changed. No. You're, 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 <laughs> no it's I'm like changed. I didn't change. Ask any friend of mine. I was always an asshole. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every time, every single time. And uh, then you lose them. You lose them, man. You lose them as, as supporters, which is fine. It's yeah. whatever. But like, it sucks because you realize that you have these people like sending these, you know, giant donations or super chats all because they thought they were going to have sex with you one day. It's like, uh, it's not enough that you're offering the content that you're offering. They, they believe you should offer something more like as if you were selling, uh, me, for example, I'm not selling just music to them. I'm selling, uh, uh, some sort of virtual pet slash boyfriend service online. Penis. So when when they discover, I'm I'm selling I'm selling digital penis. So when they discover that no, I'm just a heavy metal singer, they get super mad and super. It, it's like it's, it's almost like a possessive thing. They think they own you. Yep. Because of those ten bucks well, they sent you. I have <laughs> I've had that shit happen before where I have people that I I, I like and they'll you know fight with other people like in the chat or something. And then they'll both like message me and want me to side with both of them. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm not involved. <laughs> you guys fight amongst yourselves. I'm not in the fighting ring. And then they both end up hating me. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> you lose both. Maybe you should have chosen one. I should have chosen one. Yeah. Yes, I did not. Um, speaking of uh, the chosen one. Yeah. Disco Cobra! My man. Dang. The pink boy. We're one red boy away from a rainbow knot. And officially finally halfway to naked snake so it's got my geeks and gamers plushies in the mail today posted on twitter they look great also pre-purchased the crew motro fest motor fest uh so i'm getting early access for that played it a little i see you got the legendary dan pascal on hell 199 in the dan or do you have a plush hell yeah i don't i don't I it's plush. really hard for me to do those the, those customized merch things from here I, I can only just do what, what I can what I can do with those platforms that, that make t-shirts and and yeah. posters and stuff. I'm but yeah, maybe shirt. maybe I should try to find a way. Yes, I'm so bad. I'm so bad at that shit. Um, I'm like a nightmare at it at at, cust at merch and stuff because yeah. there's already so many things, man. I got membership things here and there, locals. I got all these things, and then it's like now. It's like now I want to push a plush on everybody. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we should outsource that too. Besides yeah. the music production. Yes. <laughs> Just hire a merch guy who have has who watches all our streams and transforms everything we say into a t-shirt. And then they like sell that. them and I don't have to do anything. Yeah, Great. exactly. Great. Thank you. I'm, I'm hired drunk 3 pro to do that. There you go. For yeah. Me. He's great. He's Mike Jackson in the chat. Mike Jackson, how you doing, dude? Yes, I'm breaking into my house. <laughs> Dude, so many people on that so many people on that tweet were like i'm on my way to breaking your it was a hilarious tweet and i get banned forever what a silly world we live in today banned forever thank you jesus debila for the gifted membership i appreciate you dude so much so um dan do you do you plan on uh have you went to any of the meetups i didn't i don't have a united states visa no because when i started to hang out with you guys it, it, it was already coof season and it was yeah. impossible to get a visa uh, if you weren't if you didn't have the jab. And now that you don't need to have the jab anymore, the line to get an interview on, on the United States consulate here in Brazil is like it's years long. Yeah. So I there's nothing I can do. I just have to wait because now everybody everybody who didn't get the jab now everybody's trying to get into the United States. So yeah. That is insane. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, uh, the United States was one of the last countries to to uh, open up for non-vaccinated people. Well, it was, That's it was interesting. Dude, all of our politicians had so much money invested in Pfizer and Moderna. Oh, I bet. I it was. Bet it's all public sure. knowledge. It, they, all, they had so much invested. So obviously, they're going to be the last ones. They're going to do yeah. whatever they can to get anybody else jabbed as fast as possible. You know, just to get a little bit more of that revenue, depending on, you know, how much the stock price increases or dividends or whatever. Um, yeah, Bill, Bill Dozer, Bill Dozer on Rumble says, y'all remember the myth that you could leave a magic card by the trainer until level 100 and it would turn into a Mew? No. I never heard of that. No, I don't remember anything about my magic card, Bill Dozer. I, I just remember it being like magic carp's trash. And then they turn into that giant <laughs> bitch, Gyarados, right? Yeah, and it's such a such a funny uh, little 
uh, prank that the game does with you. That, because the, the first time you get an opportunity to get a mag magic harp, it's that guy selling it to you. Yeah. You never found one before. So not only shit, it does nothing when, once you buy it from him. Then you start finding it and everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's literally a freaking fish. Like it's like yeah. literally a damn fish. There's it one attack cool. called Splash. Oh, what does that do? Splash. It's there's a little message. Uh, magic Arp. Splash some water, and then nothing happens. And then it just dies immediately. <laughs> yeah. like, okay, well this is useless. Um, Snow Row says maybe if those old ladies had a Dan Vass body pillow with attachments, they'd be happier. Think about it. Hey, maybe one of those pillows that have like a, an arm, yeah, coming out, and it's like my face in the pillow. They can snuggle their own like Dan. This. Yeah, it'd there be you beautiful. Go. It'd be it'd be absolutely beautiful, man. I um, I I I've been meaning to do a getting laid playlist on Spotify. And then I'll market it like, hey, have you ever wanted to get laid with Dan Vask? Now you can. There you go. Here's your Dan Vask get laid playlist. And then you could just ask the guy you're with to, to speak in a Dan Vask accent. Hey, there you go. There you go. You just need to speak like some sort of Indian character from a Shakespearean novel. And there you go. <laughs> That's all you have to do, man. That's all you yeah. have to do. Um, so... Do you 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 write music? Obviously, do you write lyrics? Yep, yeah, Dude, I, I, I love it. I hate writing lyrics. Really? I'm from I'm an Alabama man. Okay. What do you find difficult about it? Uh, coming up with clever specific? shit to say. I think clever shit to say. Like yeah, do you have a hard time with rhymes uh, that sort of stuff? Well, no, may not 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 really. I think it just takes it takes a lot of brain power. Like I can like I can do. Mm any kind of a type of music possible i can do piano i can do you know i can do all the shit but for some reason like i just don't like writing lyrics keep in mind i wrote the lyrics for all my last album it just takes so much out of me for some weird reason i don't know why is it easy for you interesting no i i i don't know i don't have a frame of reference write my lyrics but, man. But, write all my lyrics it's like <laughs> it's it's like <laughs> no it's like uh sometimes i'm watching a movie and then i hear some badass quote from a i don't know from leonidas or or, or spartacus or something like that and I, and I and i go like hey i i could write an entire song based on that phrase so you yeah. you, you just you just let the the spirit uh of the song build itself, I guess. Yeah. And there's also uh, great resources online like rhymezone.com, which is like like a uh, it's also a thesaurus, but there's the it gives you r the rhymes for the words that you that you're looking for, and it also gives you examples where that rhyme structure has been used before in everything songs from the past, Elvis Presley, uh, Johnny Cash, or uh poems like uh i don't know from from homer to 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 shakespeare and you can just get inspired by those so i find that really useful interesting yeah interesting. rhyme zone rhyme zone.com awesome hashtag not sponsored yeah I'll, I'll i'll send you some of my terrible my very first song is my favorite like lyric wise and it's so terrible like the mix is so bad dude um but yeah it's uh it, we've all I, been there we've i really like the there. lyrics because uh, they're really stupid and epic um also a stupid, common no no go ahead francis, francis lions with a ginormous australian fake money <laughs> red boy thank you so much francis is gonna give you a little bit of that eight string madness thank you so much i appreciate you it's officially a rainbow knot she says just supporting digital penis. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you. not fat and lonely, but I am on the ugly side. This is a great interview. Thanks for the laughs. Dan, <laughs> you please, please put Tears of the Dragon on Bandcamp. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks for reminding me. And Frances is cool, by the way. She she She's on our side. Good. Frances is cool. Yes. Yeah. But I'll, 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 put, I'll put it on Bandcamp for sure. Thanks for reminding me. Frances. Awesome. Dude, that's freaking but weird. yeah, I was going to say that a common mistake on writing lyrics, too, is when you prioritize some sort of agenda. I'm not even talking politically, yeah. but you you need to come to the song 
agenda free let the song itself bring up the message yeah. because if you try to fit a message to the song and you start you start needing to bend the art to the message instead of bending the message to the art then you start having problems and you can immediately notice when someone wrote a song that way hey that guy you, you can tell hey that guy tried to fit a longer phrase than than he should in that particular yeah, verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when you can tell? Oh man, I'm 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 real retarded when it comes to I'll, I will literally, dude, I will just fucking put it out there. Like the most it just whatever pops in my head is because I'm like, man, I really need to finish this sentence and I need, I need something to rhyme with this, and I'll literally it'll just be the most random shit. It's it's ridiculous. Dude, if if it goes well with the art, if it makes sense arti artistically, doesn't even need to make sense rationally. Yeah, you know, it could it could be noises, especially if you're if you're in the death metal, black metal uh, corner of it, and it's like not you don't even need to go that far. Michael Jackson used to make noises. Yeah, just yeah. because it sounded good, and it's great. It's still great today. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense, Beautiful. but it's great music. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you'll. Um, I'll send you my most my old my last track from my last album, which is the best one by far because the mix. And awesome. also, I was I was really inspired, and I feel like it's my best song easily on that album. Um, and uh, you'll hear the lyrics are ridiculous. Um, <laughs> Molly's mom, no Dan Vass plushie, etc. Please, just great music. What she do you mean, please? You don't even what, want will, your will, plush. Will that hurt you in some way, Molly's wow. mom? I'm wow. sorry if I hurt you with my body pillow. I figured like... <laughs> I mean, she, she's afraid someone will attack her with my body pillow. Oh, Imagine yeah. that. I feel like everybody <laughs> in this chat would like a plushie of me inside them. I don't yeah. understand why anybody would... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. No, I actually had a body pillow uh, when I first started YouTube. I had oh, one really? designed, and it's there. It was a there was a not safe for work version, and there was a safe for work version, and the not <laughs> safe for work version was awful. It, like because it was like the body pillow was me sleeping, and it looked great. Like it was great art, but for some reason on the not safe for work, I was sleeping, but my penis is just out, and it's it's like huge and hard. <laughs> And I was like, it's I an actual it picture or is it a drawing? It's a drawing, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you didn't. Okay. I didn't take the right. picture. No, I didn't. Because uh, I was sleeping. How my penis can be horrible? I'm sleeping. You there know? you go. And I guess it, yeah, yeah. sometimes I wake up, you know, but I feel like I'm like half awake when that happens. You know? <laughs> thank you, Molly's mom. And thank you again, nice Francis Lyons. I appreciate you guys so much. We are closing. We're closing in on the end of the show. We're 170 away from Naked Snake. Um, but yeah, because people kept, I kept talking to people and people kept telling me to talk to you about, because I'm like, man, I need, I need somebody to collab with on music uh, because vocals is the only thing I can't do. And it, I feel like I sing okay. Um, it's just, I hate the sound of my voice, man. No matter what, I hate it. I, can, even, I can't stand it. Even having recorded yourself, like speaking for so long and, and hearing yourself, because I remember I had, I had that a little bit of a hard time with that because I wasn't used to hearing my own voice as others hear it because yeah. you know you don't hear your voice like others hear it right you, yeah. there's a whole different acoustic process for your voice to get into your own ear, ears it's totally different for to, to getting other people's ears so that's why once you record yourself for the first time maybe the people at home won't, maybe one day you send a, an audio note to a friend it's like is that how i sound so that's completely that happens. That's completely normal. So yeah. you don't like your voice, even being used to hearing yourself speaking. Well, I'm so used to it now. I probably was singing. I don't know. What do you? What what mic do you use to record your voice when you're singing? Uh, it's. I I won't I won't be able to tell you the name, but it's a super expensive one that is a, a Neumann something. I've seen a lot of people use these goofy things for singing as well. These seven Bs. Oh yeah, especially for for the harsher extreme metal vocals. Yeah. Those are, are very common. But I, I used to use that that one too. This one is a I can tell you because it's written right here. It's a Roll NT one thousand, and that that got me like, I, I think the toss a coin to Witcher one was recorded with this very microphone. 
Really? Wow. Yeah. So the the very the very song that got me uh, uh, to start all of this journey was recording this. It's not a super expensive mic. It's like middle middle on the road. All right. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I use NT one thousand. I have a mic somewhere around here. It's called AK G C two one four, and it's what I used for mm -hmm. my last album. And it's like this goofy vocal mic that I bought at Guitar Center. Like a year, like ten years ago, ten years. It's been that okay. damn long. It's outrageous. And microphone technology is so interesting because it doesn't it doesn't evolve pretty much. Some of the best microphones from ten years ago are still the same. What um what do you own any guitars? I have one really cheap one just for me to 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 do some some power chords on. It's a Brazilian brand. I think it's a Brazilian brand called Condor. Yeah. But yeah, it's just for me, just for me to to be able to touch the instrument. I don't record anything with it. I have so many guitars because you know guitar. And my one of my favorite ones is I've, I've I had it sitting here because I showed Gus G. It's a Japanese standard like built um, Ibanez PS10 from like 1978, I think nice yeah let's see it it's this red red thing oh nice it's that's a, so cool it's a beautiful there's absolutely beautiful to look at. there's like not a blemish on it anywhere which is the weirdest thing considering it's so old um but it does have a problem with like going out of tune um it not is it's not uh, that bad it's not as bad as like like a cheap guitar it's a, mm -hmm. a, it's better than any cheap guitar ever would be but it's not as good as so i have this guitar which mm -hmm. is a this is a ESP standard uh, Japanese Eclipse, like their nice. standard model from 2013, I think. And this guitar is a monster. It yeah, my brother has a, a an ESP. Those yeah, it are plays good guitars. It plays beautifully, and it if it's still in. I haven't tuned this guitar in like six months, and it's still in tune. <laughs> and it doesn't have a Floyd Rose. It's like a normal ass guitar, and it just stays in tune forever. That's amazing. It's weird, con like considering. Dude, would you believe me if I told you that I did the guitars on the Witcher cover completely by MIDI? Which one? Which the Tosha Coin? The, the Tosha Coin to Witcher. I also did uh, the I'll Make a Man Out of You. The guitars are completely MIDI. I used uh, Shred Age Three. It's a fantastic MIDI guitar. And I've actually yeah, it was like I did some really simple arrangements, not. It's not too complicated. The real big thing was the the the, or the orchestral elements. So yeah, I wow. a lot of times I don't even need a real guitar. That's why I say the MIDI rabbit hole is so crazy. It's never ending because you can do in everything MIDI. That's it used wild. to be just the drummers. Yeah. Only the drummers were worried to lose the, their jobs to MIDI, but now it's everybody. Yeah, Soon I've actually will be vocals. Yeah, so I've actually heard. Um, well, the, have you heard the AI cover covers? There's like AI I covers so. of Frank Sinatra doing like Lady Gaga, and it sounds like amazing. Never Dude, seen I will, that. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull one of the movies up right now. Thank you, service, because you just have you have to see this. I will show you. It's um, what's it? Frank uh, Sinatra uh, AI cover. It's Dude, out fucking rage. It's kind of sacrilegious. Yeah, and it's it sounds like <laughs> it actually sounds really really nice. Um, it sounds like Frank Sinatra, like no joke Dang. singing. And I'm trying to find a good one. this is Gangsters Paradise. What is a good one? Um, yeah, let's do Gangsters Paradise. That'll be a good one. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't get me. I don't think it'll get me copyrighted. But so it's it's quite literally just an AI cover. Uh huh. And like, listen to this shit. It's it's beautiful. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look in my life and realize there's nothing. Isn't that wild? Because I've been blasting and laughing for so, so long that eat my mama things on my mind is gone. And I ain't never frost a man who didn't deserve it. Maybe treated like a punk, you know that's in her. <laughs> what kind of sorcery? Are you talking yeah, and where you're walking? Are you and your homies might be lying? Some parts you can cut up. See a little bit of, of, of abnormalities. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it has to be legal. This has yeah, to be legal it's, somewhere. It's, and there's so that's like that's like the uh, like the normal versions of those. And uh-huh. there's like wild versions. There's like SpongeBob SquarePants singing like <laughs> Iron Maiden, and it literally sounds like SpongeBob singing just Iron Maiden shit, dude. And they'll have damn. They'll have Mr. Krabs. Every single like character from every TV show has AI covers of them doing AI covers of like popular songs. That that sparks an interesting moral debate. What would you feel if you in life would see like y- you your voice in an AI robot singing covers and like someone is making money with that? Yeah. That, I don't know how I feel about that because even though I I am an anarcho capitalist and I I it, it's like. Uh, it's hard to for me to own something uh, like an idea without a state. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Steph's like, I want to hear the Squidward. <laughs> it's, no, you can search any. There's one where, oh my God, there was one where it's um, Mr. Krabs doing a Billy, or beat it or is it Billy Jean? I think it's Billy Jean. Yeah, it's Billy Jean. And it's, fucking amazing it's literally just billy jean but it's mr krabs like i I don't have to pull it i can pull up just the song but like it's just mr krabs voice through billy jean and it's beautiful it just doesn't make any sense well basically they overlaid the mr krabs but oh let's just zoom in here (laughs) it's hilarious Oh, you 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 didn't share it though. Oh, can you not hear it? No, no, no. You didn't oh, okay. I was like, all right, here okay. we go. Here, we'll share it now. Here we go. Here we okay. go. Okay. She was more like a beauty queen from a moon. Oh no. I said, don't <laughs> mind, but do you mean I am the one? The oh, wow. That could dance on the floor in the round. <laughs> it's just Mr. Krabs. It's so stupid. Damn. Yeah, it's crazy. How long will it take for, for, for people like to record entire albums like this? Hey, it's a post mortem Freddie Mercury album. Oh, like happy. Freddie Mercury singing new songs being composed by Brian May. Yeah, you could do Stuff it. Stuff like that. And basically how I think it works is somebody has to get kind of close. Or it's, yeah. it's it's if if they can get kind of close, it's it's almost one to one. If it's really far off, it's you can it's distinguishable. Like so, mm-hmm. somebody took Mr. Krabs and literally AI'd his voice over the original track, right? Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, if there's a guy, I don't know if you've heard of this guy. His name's Mark Mattel. Oh yeah, the guy. Holy shit! Yeah. Right? I cannot tell when if you put two two songs being sang by yeah. by Freddie. And, and 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 this guy the yeah the only difference is mark mattel has a more consistent vibrato like mm. freddie mercury has more like almost like personality in his vibrato where he kind of he'll mess up sometimes it'll slow down or speed up mark yeah. mattel is perfect he's like a machine it's like ai controlled so if he mm. did a song a whole new song and they took his voice and they just ai'd they slightly AI'd it to favor with all AI. It already sounds stuff. like Freddie. Yeah, with AI, it would be uncanny. But uh, Mark Mattel did the did the the movie, the the songs in the he movie. Did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. What a hey, God! What a what an amazing man. He sings so great. It like changed my life. Um, and I, there was there was this bullshit where Queen was like, I think it was Brian May was like, it would be too like. He's he's a great he's perfect, but it would be too emotional to have him on stage with him singing. And I'm like, just do it, just fucking do it. Stop being bullshit. Just do it. Just please, yeah. God, let me like experience this. I will go to a sh- I will travel across the world <laughs> to see this, like just to hear it. You know, um, yeah. Just, could you imagine? Won't. But the guy, how how old is Brian May? Oh my By God, he, he looks he looks pretty bad. Now, to, to be fair, actually, he looks uh, he looks. The same. It's just his hair is white, but he's yeah. seventy six. <laughs> he looks like everybody's grandma. <laughs> Damn, it does. But oh. but 
Yeah, the guy probably. Yeah, I can tell how how he doesn't want to to expose himself too much at this age, especially in such an emotional situation. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Speaking of emotional situation, we nice. got a big one. Viper Eye with a two hundred dollar super chat. Amazing. This some bitch. Says finally able to catch a live stream and save the naked snake. Well, I appreciate that because um, we are wound it down. Keep up the great work. Been watching since the Bio Game videos. Well, I appreciate that, Viper Eye. Um, by the way, guys, speaking of, it's been a long time. Uh, can you go follow the new account on Twitter? It's not me. It's Tef. It's totally somebody else, uh, as you can see in the PFP. Um, it's a different guy. They have a little little nose. They have a different nose than I do. Um, if Sonia or somebody could grab that link and put it in the chat for me. It's my uh, well. It's a different. It's a new. It's a new profile on Twitter. I, I was banned on Twitter. Everyone, um, we started off the stream by talking about that. I was completely banned on Twitter for a, literally the dumbest joke in the world. And I thought when I saw the ban come through, I thought it was something completely different. I was like, "Well," and then it, to my <laughs> surprise, it was something really stupid. Um, That's and, how you know it's bullshit. It's when you yeah. you think it's something else because you clearly think you did something worse than that. Yeah, yeah. So um, please go follow that. Um, it'll help me out a bunch because my reach has been completely killed. Um, thank God Dan followed me and was in the DMs immediately. I was like, oh, God, because I was scared I wouldn't be able to message you. I was like, yeah, oh. I think I saw Zia sharing it. Thank God, like, Zia. Zia's so good to me. Thank God for that woman. Um, yeah, by the way, Saturdays uh, is the uh, Saturday Night Camel Thoughts with Zia. Um, so don't miss the second That's episode. A great Saturday. name. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've been saving it for like a year because I was actually going to call the Camel Cast the Camel Thoughts. Um, but then I was like, wait a right. second, like, you know, I'm gonna, I just randomly did this one day and then now the camel thoughts made it, it, it worked better cause it's Zia and we talk about like, like se graphic sexual stuff and we talk about dating. So I feel like yeah, I listened to it a, li a little bit. It's a, it's a great show. Yeah. It's and we're a gonna, great idea for I'm going to try to bring porn stars on. I want porn stars on my show. I feel like they'd be Dang. so much, so fun to, to That's work cool. with just to hear their fucking crazy stories. Thank you. Viper eyes, by the way, a giant red boy huge thank you so much you're goaded as hell um we got two pink boys two red boys uh five gold boys a couple orange boys i think two orange boys we saved the streak just barely thank you viper i appreciate you you're goaded as hell um so uh what you what what kind of projects you got coming up dan i always mean to ask this and always forget uh right now i, I i'm working on some original stuff uh alongside my very good friend Eric July, uh, we, were, we were writing some stuff together, and I'm planning on releasing a Man of War tribute album. Oh wow! Which is like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on it because because when you're doing original songs, sometimes it, it, it's at the hands of someone else, and there's nothing you can do. So I'm trying to fill up my idle time with some something else, and that's gonna be that Man of War tribute album. And yeah. it's my favorite band in the world, it's actual heavy metal, true heavy metal, not emo bullshit th that you see nowadays w with all the uh, self-pity and stuff. Yeah, It's great, fantastic quality metal, and I'm happy to share with people. Hell yeah. Yeah, we need to work on something too. So I'm gonna have something to look. Absolutely, for. absolutely, man. You got, you got me too. super curious. You got Damn me super it, curious to hear gonna, your stuff. You're gonna hear it and be like, "What the fuck is this track?" Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Torgo. Yes, um, I have Rich uh, Chrissy coming on uh, next week. Chrissy Mayer's coming on, I think, next week on my show, and I will definitely ask her because I need that shit. I need all the porn stars, man. Need I them need all. all the porn stars. <laughs> it's gonna be so fun. Um, Thank you, Torgo. I appreciate you, my friend. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll, I'll send you that stuff. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, awesome. Awesome. So, um, speaking of Twitter, um, so you said you're on your second Twitter account, right? Yeah. Well, it's not, it's probably not you. It's probably a different person, but still, no. uh, <laughs> it's probably a completely different person. Right? Yeah, um, don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, it's me. It was me all along. It was me. Uh, <laughs> what was it you said earlier that got you banned? I just called this breastless chick by her actual name. Oh, yeah. You For dead me. named somebody, you bastard. How could you? Can I Alan. say it on YouTube? Yeah, fuck them. So, so I just said Alan Page. Oh, yeah. 
See? I just said Alan Page and I got banned. Not banned, timed out. But it, it was pretty, for all intents and purposes, banned because I'm not clicking the damn thing that says I committed a hate act and stuff yeah. like that. Because in some countries that has legal repercussions and I'm just just not doing it. So it could as well be banned. It was only 15 days. <laughs> but those 15 days turned out to be one year. Oh, Ellen Page. Oh, oh Ellen, Ellen Page. Page. Yeah, uh, what is it? Elliot Page with the with the, with the yeah. really giant weird ab implants. The first picture. Ab I implants? Is that it? Yeah. Do you see them? Like the is first. Is that a picture. thing? Yeah. I course. thought I thought she was just jack jacked up. No. So um yeah, you can get ab implants. Like they're just like breast implants, but they go over your abdomen, and they Fuck. look freaking sh like sh like shredded, right? Well, Ellen Page is just like I'm a guy now. And then w literally just didn't step into the gym and went and got ab implants. Because you can't, like, they're so huge. And Ellen Page's arms are literally like drinking straws. Yeah. And it's just this <laughs> giant freaking shredded abs, like, all the way down. Vein. I'm like, oh. Yeah, I always thought it was weird. So that is that explains it. It's implants. Because, uh, yeah, super jacked up abs and torso uh, and broomstick arms. Yeah. I was yeah, like, fuck. It's basically the Such same Such a thing. cheater. Yeah. It's like synthol, but like you don't, it's not, you're not, you're not putting oil into your body and you're not going <laughs> to die immediately. And they like pop. Yeah. There's a, where is it? Let me, let me find that picture. So it's a really great picture. Um, Elliot Page shirtless. This, I hope this doesn't send the FBI out of my freaking house. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, that's the, yeah. So this is the picture right here. And it's the, it's so jarring because the abs are so massive. Um, there it is. Okay. Yeah, so I think Jordan Peterson was also banned for the same reason. Damn. She, he called her Alan Page. Man. He uh he has to go to a re-education like class. Oh yeah, you're following that bullshit. Yeah, that's hilarious. Like, wow, wow. But look at these Dude. abs. This looks like Chris Hemsworth's abs, but it's like the little, little Yeah, little. you just you have like <laughs> it's like you traded half of your torso with He Man. Yeah, <laughs> but the rest is still <laughs> the rest so is still crazy. a twelve-year-old boy. Yeah, and uh, one of <laughs> one of uh, another person that is very well known for having um, uh, ab implants, which would never admit it, is uh, the Liver King. And you can actually see you can see the similarities oh, here. Really? Yeah, so Liver King's that guy that said he was totally not on steroids, but he's like the size of a house, and that's not really human. Yeah, yeah. So um, also ab implants on top of that. So the guy is completely. Yep. Yep. It's right here. Completely full of shit. Yeah. It's right here. So th these actually look similar to like Ellen Page's right. abs, right? Like they, they're just these massive abs, which makes it where you can actually, you don't have to be super low body fat to have like this yeah. giant abs. So yeah, these are just ab implants. They're not even real. Damn. That, that has to feel weird. Yeah, you would think when you're like you you crunching your abs and you feel there's something external. Yep. I don't know. How do you feel? Yeah. How do you feel about steroids? Since you you you're in the fitness space. Um, uh, I don't really have an opinion on them. I don't. Uh, I don't think they're bad. I think they're misunderstood. I do plan on doing them when I'm in my late thirties. I think. Uh -huh. I'm just gonna fucking go ham. Just yeah, just <laughs> but say, just saying steroids can mean a lot of things, right? Yeah. So you're talking about what? Just uh, uh... I'm talking about uh, like D ball and Tran and Anabar and <laughs> MPT and Sus, like all the shit, like uh, all the shit. I would want to try it once in my life, like and see see how I, my body reacts to it, just for fun. Um, right? Because when you're late, who cares? I'm all I'm old. Fuck it, I'm dead. I mean, I'm gonna die soon. Fuck it. Um, but as far <laughs> as yeah. Um, I don't really, uh, yeah, I don't really have a problem with it. Now, granted, look, I've been going to the gym. I've been in the gym, like, culture for over 10 years now. And every, there, uh, there's not many people that go to my gym that are not on, like, ass tons of, like, steroids. Mm -hmm. They all. No natties. Yeah, they're all on them. Because I go to a meathead gym. It's like a dirty meathead gym. Everybody's <laughs> the size of my house. And. Oh, man, those are the best. Yeah, and it's, and everybody's super nice. And they're really open. They'll tell you what their stacks are. And. It's people doing it for whatever reason they want to do it for. Um, but yeah, I I, I, I kind of want to try it like in a few years when I'm like, okay, I'm I'm not young anymore. There's nothing about me that's young. Let's get jacked. Right. <laughs> this is about as this is as far as I can go 
like without it. You think you've reached your natural limit? Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. I've right. been I've looked like this for like two two and a half years, and I go hard at the gym every day, and I eat. I'll, I do my eat cycling. I'll eat. I'll bulk. Do a bulk diet. I'll do a cut diet. Mm-hmm. Do a bulk diet. Cut diet. Bulk diet every year. Um. So, yeah, I think I'm at that. Right. I weigh like one ninety eight. Um. I just don't think I can do anymore. <laughs> Time right. to get five hundred pounds. Just solid rock. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't. I don't have a moral problem with it whatsoever. But I don't think. I don't think I. W- I would do it, except I have a. Except if I had a serious problem, serious hormonal problem of some sort. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Cool. I'm. I'm kind of scared of that shit. But, yeah, all of the greats have done it. Yeah, every one of them. Yeah, every every yeah. job. Yeah, they're all done. Every actor. Um, every male actor in like some kind of lead role where they're kind of thick, every one of them, they're all on it. Um, they have uh-huh. to because natty limits are a thing. Chris Hemsworth would never weigh more than 202 pounds or 195 pounds because he's fucking tall without gear. And when he's mm-hmm. playing Thor, like thick Thor, he weighs like 240. He's on an ass ton of gear, HGH, all that shit. Um, and that's fine. You know, they look great. But do, do, do you have a sort of a, a goal? In terms of, do 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 you have a bodybuilder or an actor that you inspire to that you see that and you you say that's how I want to look like? Oh God, I don't know. I don't really know. It used to be. I think it used to be Chris Hemsworth. Um, but right now it's kind of like I've gotten to a point where I feel like I almost looked like Chris Hemsworth. Uh, last year in May, I was like nine percent body fat and I was I looked really thick. And like I had nice abs and I was like, that, that and that's kind of how I would prefer to look um, forever. Cool. But it's almost impossible for me to sustain that because I don't have the genetics for it. If I look at a freaking beer or a cheeseburger, I gain 20 pounds. You know, <laughs> I'm not, I have friends that can eat whatever they want and they will do, but I, I have to, I have so to be an easy gainer. Out. Yeah. Oh, I can get free. Right. I can gain muscle. I can gain strength. I cannot, uh, I have to be on a six month cut dot to even see anything brutal right. it's brutal yeah my my ultimate goal would be sylvester stallone in first blood part oh my two. god sylvester yeah. stallone in first blood, blood part two and it's commonly understood that he was natural during yeah. that movie and he really started doing steroids during rambo three i we don't know but i i think i look at that physique uh, in in first blood first blood part two and i think it's reachable yeah so um, I don't remember which Rambo it is. I can use Rocky as a better reference because I've watched him so much. Uh-huh. So Rocky one and two, you can tell Sylvester Stallone's pretty, pretty natural, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden Rocky three, it's unfucking yeah. believable. He's Rocky he one and out. two, you cannot see his abs. Yeah, and Rocky yeah. three, dude, he is shredded to the gills, and Rocky four, yeah. he's even more shredded to the gills. It's unbelievable, and I think it's it yeah. might be the second Rambo. Uh, maybe the second Rambo where he's just unbelievably shredded. I'm like, damn, son. He's damn. very shredded. He's not too big, but he looks big because of, of being so shredded. Yeah. And it's also like uh, walking beside skinny girls and, and the, those prisoners of war that he saves. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, Arbok yeah. is so much gay, concentrated in one little stream. <laughs> it's like Pride Month in September. <laughs> Keep in mind, uh, Pride Month is year, all year round, uh, obviously, because there's oh the, yeah, there's oh, Pride dude, everywhere. especially here in Brazil, dude. What is hey, it? About? Hey, I'm not, I'm not even wearing my man bun today. <laughs> what is it about? Is yeah. so I don't, you know, obviously I'm from a completely part of the different part of the world. Is Brazil more that way? Like pride. more gay, definitely. Brazil is more gay than the <laughs> United States. Absolutely. Well, in the United States are fatter. Oh yeah. So and, and, and estrogen is producing the fat cells. So mm-hmm. in that sense, you're more gay. But culturally, <laughs> I think we're more gay because of carnival. Because of carnival. Carnival is super gay. What's carnival? So like, what is car- car- carnival? Uh, it's it's like a party, a national party that we have that has no reason to be except to, for party, for partying. Is it's just, it, and it lasts like a whole week, and nobody works, and and you know. I see what you're saying. Okay, I'm I'm pulling it up here. Okay, so it's a giant festival. 
is a giant fast fold that is celebrating basically nothing. <laughs> it's just for partying. It's just for partying. There's no reason to be. Interesting. Any, and so anything else than that. On the other side of the spectrum in America, well, specifically in New York, but there's places in uh, Canada as well, which is, you know, Canada is basically America's hat, um, where it's like, it's very, very overtly like sexual. Like there was a, in Ontario, for example, there was a, there was a nudist parade and there was kids everywhere. And there was just old dudes with like completely butt naked with their dicks out, just like walking and talking up to talking to kids and stuff. And I'm like, why are these people not being pulled? Like, why are they? What's about? Yeah, what's about those weirdos that it it it, it's not enough to be weird. I have to be weird in front of kids. Exactly. That's something in there. That's like a fetish or something. It has to be in front of kids. Yeah, it's like why don't uh. Why don't you just not involve kids? I wouldn't. I don't care. I mean, I'm not going to go to a thing, but I don't care if you got your ass yeah. balls and so. But as long as the kids yep. ain't involved, and I don't know if you remember, but 80s, 90s in popular media, there was this this guy that would always get arrested. Um, and it was a it was a popular thing that people did, and they were called flashers. They would wear flashers. really big trench coats. They were like oh, really yeah, gross sure. guys, and they would just yeah. they would wear nothing underneath, and they would just they would show kids. Yeah, like and they would get a get a kick from that. Yeah, and they would get arrested, yeah. and now it's like completely encouraged to do stuff like that. Yeah, it's but you scary. say you're saying you've noticed that as a a localized phenomenon in some places where, yeah. where it's stronger than others. Why oh, yeah, do you think would, that is? Oh, because, well, because places like New York, for example, when, uh-huh. like New York Pride parades, they don't they'll do shit like that there. They don't care. Well, but the the issue is, is big cities are in general. Big cities are fucked up. Yeah, no they do where, not where you are. They do not enforce certain things. I mean, they decriminalized most like misdemeanors, most felonies in New York. Shoplifting is not even a felony anymore in New York. There's that was during the coup. That was insane. Yeah, and I cover a lot of retail stuff on my channel and video content. And like one of my videos coming out tomorrow, Walmart, for example. They, they, there's Walmarts and Targets that are closing stores in these areas because they're people. They, it's legal to steal in these areas. Yeah, that's so what they should are do. Running in and stealing. They there's should just close. Have you seen those vi- videos on Twitter? Of I've just seen. I've seen some hundred people running into a Walmart and just running out with stuff, and it's not. It's not criminalized. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's still technically illegal, but no one enforces it because there's so many people doing it and it's not really worth the paperwork because it's not a felony anymore. It's crazy. And then when people yeah. get angry about it in New York, the mayor just tells them they're racist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. Dude. Yeah. Just, just get out of big cities, man. Just get out of big cities. Uh, my brother went to a, to a wedding in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is like, a lot of people don't know this. It's the big, it's the biggest city in the Americas with an S. Yeah. It's bigger than New York. It's bigger than, it's a bigger city in the Americas. And my brother went to a wedding there. And it's like, who, who comes here for fun? <laughs> it, it, it's like, who finds it fun to be in a constant, uh, surrounded by crackheads no. in, in, in this constant dude smell of pollution and piss oh my god i have gotten the- so tired of it and look i live in a, i live in a city um contrary to popular belief i live in one of the only cities in alabama and uh it's we have a downtown it looks just like you know some place in new york fucking buildings everywhere no forest and i live like a mile away from that and i live right on the offshoot so it's a little bit more rural where I am, but the cost of living is unbelievable. So oh, I can't imagine because <laughs> everybody wants to live there. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so dude, it's wild. Um, I will be, I'll go downtown to, you know, drink or I'll be going to the gym, which is close to downtown. And there is suddenly in the last two years, there's just homeless people everywhere, everywhere. And they keep running up to me while I'm trying to get my damn car trying to give me a sob story which isn't true it's always the same shit it's always like hey man i yeah. my wife's pregnant and my car broke down and i need to get to atlanta it's like dude just tell me you want money yeah because that will be easy that's actually just I respect tell me one of the crack money is i this- respect that more if you like if a dude walked up to me and was like bro i need some, dude i need i need to get well i need some crack 
you have ten dollars. I'd be like, bro, here you go, ten dollars, get some crap. But if you're gonna make up a sob story, it's obvious bullshit. Like I'm just it just pisses me off. And I've gotten to the point where I feel like a horrible person because people will I'll see them coming across the parking lot and they're like yelling at me. They're like, hey man, hey, hey, hey. And I literally yeah. like will be like like I'll yell over like the parking lot. I'm like, fuck off. And I just get <laughs> I've got, but it's an awkward situation that they put you in because yeah. you're kind of in a vulnerable place. You you're you're there with your car, and, and you don't know who the, who the person is. Yeah. So well, you don't know what they can do with your car while while you're away. So yeah, it, it's it's weird. It happens a lot in my town too. My my t I don't live in a small town. I don't consider it a city. I don't know. Like half a million people can be considered a city. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I think my city is just over that. And yeah, it's, that's it's pretty. Yeah, tight then yet, it's my, yeah, then it's my case too. But yeah, it's already starting to piss me off. Uh, when I I I was born here, I grew up here, but it was this lovely little little place that uh, I remember hearing people tell me that there was like one hundred thousand people here when I was little, but now it's like half a million, and it's just like. It's unsufferable. People everywhere, yeah. and, and, and homeless people everywhere. Crack, crackheads yeah. down the street. It's yeah, not. I I don't like big cities, dude. When I, I first like moved here, when I first moved here, it was like so not crowded, and now it's just unbearable. Have you seen Kensington, Pennsylvania? No, it's I a haven't. city in America. I'm gonna show it to you here in a second, and then we'll wind down because it's freaking wild. Speaking of winding down. Disco Cobra with a hundred dollar super chat. My God. Says I'm the given mood tonight. So much manly talk in this stream. Would Dan Bask ever do a cover of Tears for Fears? Like Head Over Heels or Shout or something like that? I know he gets many requests. Just want to throw some out there. Think about it. I gotta I I, I gotta do my homework on, on Tears for Fears. That's a I great confess, I yeah. don't know much about it. Um, what is that? That one song is uh Something, something, I'm head over heels. And then the other one is the, it's like shout, shout, let it all out. Oh, that I know. Yeah. These are the things. Yeah. That's a great song. Thank you, Disco Cobra. I appreciate you so much. Another red boy, another, we're two red boys nice. from a red ass night for the first time in forever. Thank you so much, Disco Cobra. I love you. You're goaded. Thank you for being in a given mood. I appreciate that. Um, I don't deserve it, man. Uh, Tarzan, Jungle Kong Fu. Says been to Brazil a couple of times. My wife is from Recife. What is? How do you pronounce that? Recife. Recife. Yeah, that's an R. <laughs> yeah, because R's in Portuguese make a, a age sound. Wow. Recife. Recife. Um, yeah. She couldn't wait to leave that city. The old buildings are cool, but man, what a crazy damn place. Yeah, and and Recife is not even as bad as São Paulo. If she if she went to São Paulo, she would go crazy. It's just like the smell of pollution and piss everywhere. Ugh. Crackheads, Ugh. trans crackheads in every corner. <laughs> even, they're not normal. Tra they're not even normal. Yeah, crackheads not anymore. even. What happened to the good old normal crackheads? Now it's Mr. like trans furry crackheads trans everywhere. Furry. They even got their fur suits on and shit. <laughs> Weird place, sir. Weird place. Sir, you got some money. <laughs> you got some money. I'm trying to buy some children. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tarzan. Yeah, so Kensington, yeah. Pennsylvania, man. Fucking wild. Um, and there is absolutely no law. Like, there's laws there when it comes to, like, homeless or occupancy or drugs, but they are not enforced at all. And this is a live stream that's always live. It started, uh, well, this one started two days ago, but they're usually always live. And uh -huh. it's quite literally just people doing drugs out in the open. And like just trash. This is next to the subway station or bus station, by the way. Uh huh. It's an active place that's open, and there's just people doing drugs out in the open, doing fentanyl out in the open, passed out. And this is actually pretty tame right now. Usually, people are tripping. Even the, no even the normal, quote unquote, normal people look weird. Like yeah, and people are just passing by, all like, Bleh. yeah. Well, that, that's <laughs> they're also probably homeless. Everybody here is homeless, man. Like it's gonna pan over here, and there's there's usually people lining these walls, and they they are actively injecting um, fentanyl and tranquilizer, like mixed. Yeah, you know, most of those people are there out of their own free will, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's they, um, they, they, they always come up with that story. Oh, I lost everything and all that, but most of those people are there voluntarily. Yeah, and it's because the government 
will give them some kind of UBI, like universal yeah. based income. And they're like, well, I'm going to stay here and just do drugs. Um, and there I, I think there, there's actually a really nice interview of this girl that lives here. And she's a pretty girl and she's been living here for 10 years. And they're like, why don't you like go? Cause she was very smart, very articulate. And it's like, why don't you go home and like, you know, find a support structure with your parents, which she still has and do all these things. And she's like, because it's so easy to like be here. And like live on the street yeah. and I, I have free access to drugs and I never miss a meal because she can just give somebody a hand job for like twenty dollars and get a meal. It's yeah. fucking and no and there's no like law enforcement like enforcing like this dude's about to trip balls right here, I can tell. Yeah. Like this dude's tripping balls right now. They're all trying. What it's, is like, this, doing? Is, this is actually weird because it's so dead here. It's usually way worse. Oh, that dude's tripping balls for sure. Yeah. Yeah, usually you can see them. They're like walking around. It, yeah. the 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 nickname for the city is, uh, I think, Zombie City, because every basically every look at all this trash, man. It's crazy. Um, what about that zombie drug? Have you heard about it? I forgot the actual name. They, the Craig showed us in a in a side scrollers episode. It's like a drug that makes you like you look like a zombie. I forgot the name. Yeah, it's maybe it's, someone in the chat knows. It's called it's it's fentanyl mixed with tranquilizer. I think and that was it. It's it but, makes, but it has like a it has like a, a shorter name. I don't know. It's, I forgot. I somebody forgot. Else. No, they call it Trank, or they call it Trank in the chat. Trank. That's it. Yeah. Trank, so that's yeah. It. it makes people. I'm trying to find somebody. It's usually way easier to find this, but you'll see people walking like like hunched down on the ground, yeah. like as like like you said, like a zombie, and I like they'll always be bending over like this and walking, and. I can't find any. It's so weird. They're usually all out here. Maybe the police came and stabbed some people. Like this person's about. <laughs> There's to be like one thousand people watching this right now. <laughs> yeah. There's a guy right here. Yeah. This dude's this dude's on it right now. You see him? Yeah. Yeah. He's like That's holding it. onto his That's leg. That's it. Dear life. Exactly. He's like, please God. He's you know he's flying through space right now. Yeah. You know, like... I don't know about you, but um, I've uh you know I've gotten dr so drunk before where like every I'll like sit down and stuff will start spinning. And um, I'll I'll be on my bed and I'll like roll over and hold the sheets, like I, you know, like you're holding on, and then it stops. It's so weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you're, oh, oh, you're like flying, but you're not. You're not moving. Same same shit with a uh, THC. Like uh, the first time I ever did THC, um, I was in like I think I was in Las Vegas. Maybe I don't remember. I, yeah, I was definitely in Las Vegas, and um. I took too much, of course. It's just like weed, of course, uh, but it's like edibles. Right. And I was like flying through space. I, I was like having to hold on to shit. Damn. I was like, oh, I have God. no idea. I have no <laughs> idea how that feels. I never it's done. I, I, I'm a tame boy. I, I'm a, it, it's, I, a, it's like I've never even got drunk. I drink, but I never, never got drunk. It's just when I feel that when I start to get a little bit happier. Yeah. I stop because I yeah. don't want to be happy. I don't want to be mad. All yeah. the time. This is bullshit. You know, the, yeah. When you all you do is take take two two fast shots of like of like a like of a Woodford, which is my favorite. Take just two, yeah. just slam two quick shots, and you'll finally feel what it's like to be drunk. <laughs> oh, for me, it will probably be just one because I yeah, just it's not. It's it's, <laughs> it's 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 if you keep it containable. I like I like the feeling of being like kind of mm -hmm. drunk because it's maybe very you should try like uh, in a safe environment. Yeah, maybe in a safe home. It's, very yeah. manageable. The only thing is, it's like a, uh, it's like a, uh, it's like a maelstrom. So, the first time I ever got drunk is always the worst because you don't stop. So you'll drink a little, and you'll finally start getting drunk, and you're like, oh my god, this this feels like awesome. The first time you're like, oh, I didn't know this was how it felt. This is crazy, and you just want more. You're like, yeah, I want to get more drunk, right. and then you you keep doing it until you fucking black out, and it's like the worst. Next two days, you feel like awful, um, but then you learn how to manage it. And you learn how to kind of stay in that exact perfect space, and it's fantastic. Mm. Um, but I, yeah, I used to use it sort of as a, a like a balls builder to talk yeah. with, to talk to girls. Yeah. But then I I, I realized that I was w w without drinking. I was starting to I couldn't approach a girl for like f no matter how cute she was and how interested I was if I wasn't. A, a little bit intoxicated i couldn't approach them so i i i i went back a little bit i dialed back a little bit because yeah. of that i didn't i didn't like that sensation having I got, to, yeah. to need a drink to 
talk to a girl. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> it's not not for girls. I've always been just it's not it's not even that they're girls. It's just I just I'm really I've always been really good at just talking to people and uh, I enjoy talking to people, right? So, but I got to the point and this is very recently. I didn't start drinking until I was almost 30. I had I had never okay. been drunk until I was 27, first time I ever got drunk. It's 27. And then like the second time was like six months later. And then the third time was like six months after that. So, um, and I still, you know, I don't drink. I drink like once, maybe once a week, maybe. And, uh, but I got to the, I was drinking these things called white claws. They're like seltzers and they're for white, white women. And I was, I was hanging out <laughs> with a lot of white women. So I kept drinking these seltzers and I got to the point where I wanted to drink them every day because they're cold. They're like really cold and they're carbonated and they kind of taste good. So um, they, they don't they don't at first, but you get used to them. And I was like mm-hmm. to the point where I wanted to drink them every single day. And I was like, uh, and so I stopped it's like buying. a tasty soda. Yeah. So I stopped buying them forever. I like I was like, what done with that? And I started buying like one of these every three weeks. And mm-hmm. I like I was I'll take a shot or well, usually I'll put it with Coke and I'll sip on some Coke like once a week and I'll drink two of them once a week. And uh, like Saturday was the uh, I took like three shots, like three small shots. Um, right. and barely felt anything but you know trying to yeah, take to me back. i go i go with uh i i try to vary but it's like once a month i usually don't drink at all except once a month when i just allow myself to i i don't know whatever is the excuse that i need to celebrate something or to simply cel- celebrate another successful month but i i just get uh some alcoholic beverage and I light up a cigar and eat a big fatty steak. Yeah. Just That's smoking awesome. a cigar. Yeah, smoking a cigar at the same time as I eat the steak and as I drink. So it's just like, yes. Oh my God, the, dude. The, I was the month is done. The month is done. I was um yeah. I was in Houston with Critical Drinker and Gary. And uh Critical Drinker kept buying me freaking Woodford like uh Coke like every two seconds he'd be like here you go and i'm like oh god and i'm like let me get you around and he's like no like he's like i got all of them he just kept giving them to me <laughs> so i drank like five and i was feeling pretty good and then i went outside and vic mignano who is like you know he's the voice of broly and all these characters the anime characters right. and he's smoking cigars and he's 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 a, he's such a great dude he was like camelot and he like hands me a cigar and like lights it for me and i'm just like smoking a cigar <laughs> like and we're just out there smoking a cigar drinking jack and cokes and then we go to a steakhouse that it was awesome nice. i love it that's nice. why you need it what countries can you go to you say you don't have american visa the u.s yeah i can go to to most of the european union without a visa brazilian scan uh probably not the uk now but yeah no no United States, no Canada. Even though the 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 Canada Canadian visa is very easy to get, you can get it online. You don't even need to go to the Canadian consulate, I, and I can get to pretty much all countries in South America with just my ID. Don't even need a passport. But yeah, uh, European Union, no visa. It's pretty cool for Brazilians at least. So that so, but Scotland's in the UK, so you can't go to Scotland, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the the UK is out of that little deal. I yeah, think so people can double check that. So, what's part of the U- European Union that's not the UK? Let's see, Euro, Euro. I can't spell. Um, <laughs> union. All right. So, the countries in the European Union is. Let's see. Yes, uh, someone in the Spain, chat says, Portugal, "Yeah, my Brazilian ex girlfriend moved to Europe." By the way, you're stealing our girls, Jonah. Bastards. What are you, what are you doing? So you, you doing? can go you can go through Netherlands, France, Italy, Spain, Portugal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh dude, if you get a if you get an Italian passport, you can go anywhere. It's like it's the it's the most va- seek that sought out passport on earth. Yeah. Like, and, and if you have any degree of Italian ancestry you can get one yeah it's pretty amazing awesome yeah so because i'm like trying to figure out like i'm gonna i'm going to scotland next year um Mm -hmm. and i was like man i need to coordinate something so we can right so we can find we can drink (laughs) we can make (laughs) this happen i'm excited um i think scotland scotland is out 
Yeah, we can't oh, go to Scotland. I mean, I'll yeah. go to Scotland, but I'll go somewhere else as well. You I'll can drive down, yeah. rent a Ferrari, and drive down to like Italy. <laughs> there you go. That'll work. Nice. Um, Ghost Meteor, appreciate you for your thirty dollars locals dono. By the way, I'll be streaming on locals after this. Put the link in the chat, please. It's going to be an exclusive nice. locals only stream directly after this. I think it's time for some naked snake with Dan Vasque for the 212th stream oh, in a row. It's been two years, almost two years since the last time we have not hit a naked snake and we destroyed it today with the help of some crazy people. Disco Cobra, my boy, Viper Eye, $200. That's insane. Only beat by Matt Fauchin the other day, by the way, with his Canadian $500 Super chat. Um, and Francis Leons. Thank you so much. Don't forget the pinkies. Disco. I love you. Appreciate you. Billy Hatcher, as always. And of course, the Orange Boys, the old school Shanny, Magnum Norse. I appreciate you. Two Orange Boys today. We have more Red Boys than Orange Boys and Pink Boys. The Red Boys were on point today. Thank you guys so much. We have a little bit left. So get on it, doggone it. So we're going to do Neck and Snake for the 200. And twelfth, and it's not going to be synced up. It's going to be beautiful. I'm so excited. Dude. Yeah, it's no, going to be. Yeah, beautiful is one word. Because usually it's just me singing, um, <laughs> because no one ever knows the words. But you're like, oh yeah, I love Middle Year Three, and I'm like, bro, I have I have the lyrics right here in front of me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, boys, make sure you guys get them locks up. Get your blue boys ready. We are 15 locks away from 700, which is really nice. That's that's actually pretty solid. Um, thank you guys. I appreciate that. That's more than the the first show of uh, Camel Thoughts. Which will hey, change because hey. I might have some porn stars on. So you guys have to watch that. Be My fun. better thought than Zia. Yes. There you go. <laughs> old, 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 a thought bask. <laughs> it worked out. Body pillows and all. All right, boys. Get on it, dog on it. Here we go. Thank you again, Ghost Meteor. Make sure you guys like the show. Like the show. Get on it, dog on it. Um, and uh, speaking of, I got to agree with Sparkle Fart here. Sparkle Fart said this dude is the worst beggar. I agree. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, there's always people getting coming here and they get so mad because you know people choose to support the show. They're uh, like so angry yeah. about it, and I'm like, bro, I'm sorry. And I can't yeah, help. Like, it. Can't I'm help being it. loved by people and making money. I can't Be help mad. it. That my titties are glorious, Sparkle Fart. <laughs> okay, they give me red boys because my titties. Are, I can jiggle them. Thank you. Appreciate it. From now on, the ne the next thing is gonna be like every like. You have to super chat the color of whatever shirt Ooh. I'm wearing. And then every day I just wear a red shirt. <laughs> That's oh, simple. Tenth show in the street. A tenth show in a row. He keeps wearing red. I wonder why. All right. Here it's we the go. The only one I have. <laughs> it's the only one. I only have one shirt. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not my fault. All right. It's time, guys. For Neck of Snake with Dan Vask. Here we go. Dan can start us off. Oh, you start. I don't know this instrument. Oh, you don't know? Here, I'll start and you continue. Because I got to take my headset off. And I'll, I'll hop in. Yeah. All right. Mm, yeah. You guys ready? 212 in a row. Here we go. Let's get on it, dog. On it. Mm. And Dan has to continue. I'm going to do like four bars, Dan. All right, here we go. What a thrill With darkness and silence through the night There you go, Dan, go. What a thrill There you go. I'm searching a mountain to you What a fear in my heart you're, You're so, so supreme. So. <laughs> yeah. My life, not for honor, but for you. The song disappears when I sing. <laughs> there you go. There'll be no one else. Amazing. It's the way I fly to you. Amazing. Still in a 
dream snake eater. Beautiful. Here you go. Ready? <laughs> it is Dan. Ready? Through the rain. <laughs> What a tree from It's ordeal The trial To survive For the day We see new light I give my life Amazing That instrument is so different Oh yeah In my time There Still this yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get Dan, I'm gonna get Dan to do this from now on. Just I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to call Dan, dude. <laughs> you need. Have you done a cover of that? I haven't. Oh, what? The, <laughs> but that I I'll do. It. We'll do it together. I'll do the guitars and the drums and everything. We'll make it freaking. Let's shrapy. do it. Let's That'd do be it. A good one. That'd be when great is the one. when is the Metal Gear Solid one anniversary? Hold on. Let's like see. like w w when does it release? Let's see. There's an anniversary. No, it's not anniversary. It's a. Uh, they're it's about to release the new collection. What is it called? HD remasters of first, second, and third. It comes out August or it says autumn 2023. Is all it says. Autumn 2023. October 24th. Oh, it's already. Yeah, it's. That's it's already like a month here, and a half, much. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, shit, I can do anyway, that. Anyway, we can do it whenever. Whatever. Yeah. Do all the instruments in one day, bro. Nice. Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, well, that, that, was, that was a disaster, but it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was funny because it, it was like a half a second delayed. It was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> but you actually, you, you came through and like your voice sounded great. It was it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, the streaming arts does that weird thing. It, it, it brings down the volume of the, the rest of the shit once once you're once you're talking. Yeah, I don't know how I don't know how to change that in StreamYard. I wish I knew. Maybe how to... it's because you have your echo thing turned on. The there's an echo option. Well, for for when people are where is it? For when people are not using is it called echo headphones. cancellation. Echo cancellation. Do you have that on? Yes. Maybe, Maybe it's, it's that. that. Yes, had that on. Damn it! Wait, wait. <laughs> Oops, now, now I'm, I'm hearing, hearing an echo. echo. What? <laughs> is it? Is it? Are you guys, guys hearing it too? too? Sounds great to me. It's weird. It's a sound, 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 sound test. test. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you should, you turn, should turn that turn back, that back on. on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good Not now. That. It's on. Um, thank you, Steph. <laughs> by the way, money for those glorious titties. Thank you so much, Steph. Glorious. I appreciate you. Oh, I bet it. I bet I know why. It's because I had. Uh, I bet. I bet. It, I bet I'll fix it right here. Watch, because I had my speakers uh, coming through my. Let's try it now. What about now? What? What? Is there echo now? Yeah, there is an, an echo. echo. Oh damn! I thought I fixed it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsies. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, it, it's fine then. Streamyard it's, works in mysterious ways. Those bastards. Well, it's the best. Yeah. It's been pretty great. Um, because it works. It's for, awesome collab so damn well man it's like, oh yeah it's great send a link Dude, in it. i had my i had my my rambo bandana here too uh that'd have been great that's yeah, what you need here. to do yeah. if we do a cover i'll just play guitar yeah, myself. snake and yeah. rambo playing metal yeah like that'd <laughs> holy be great. shit thank you steph <laughs> okay, i love you i appreciate you thank you ghost media and locals uh i'm gonna swallow some food and get on locals immediately. I'm gonna go ahead and post a link to my locals. Um, maybe. <laughs> Hold on, camera three, three, four. Oh, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll post a link to the the automatic promo code to join my locals, so you can watch my stream on locals. I should probably do that. That's probably a better move. Um, so you guys can actually join. Um, that gets you ten ten dollars off locals, and it helps your boy out in a big way. Um, thanks so much to Dan Bass. We almost hit eight hundred likes. Which is the most nice on a camel cast in a minute. Um, so awesome. I'm, you, you brought a lot of people with you, Dan. I appreciate you. Hey, my pleasure, man. We, we've been 
We've been talking about it for a while. Oh, otherwise, not talking about it because my DM, uh, I suck we were, at responding DMs. We were like indirectly <laughs> talking about it, like through like yeah. chats on different through, channels. Through chats. But my DMs are doing this weird thing that I, I don't receive the push notifications on my phone. And, and once I click on them, even on my PC, then the push notifications show up. It's super weird. As said, this is happening to him too. It's so Come on, cool. Elon. As bastards. Um, focus, focus, please get me on band for making freaking <laughs> that too. Jesus. Um, thanks again to all these insane people with all this support tonight. I appreciate you guys so much. You guys are goaded. You're awesome. Um, I wouldn't be here without you and I don't deserve you. Um, except for X wing. I would be here without X wing. Um, <laughs> thank you. The voice of an angel in the face of a chair, pure handsome. Thank you so much. X wing. I appreciate you. We're going to raid legal mindset. Everyone. We're going to raid legal mindset. And if you How don't, do you raid on YouTube, you, when you're streaming, you just go to, um, the customization tab in your YouTube studio uh -huh. and it, it's, it's edit and then customization in every stream. And then you go down and it says redirect and you literally can raid anybody. You want. Oh, that's too complicated. That's more complicated <laughs> than it should be. It is. Definitely. It should have one button, but it's two. And yeah. uh, two button, two money. Two buttons, too many for my ass. Yeah. Um, it should be is... on the live dashboard. Yes, I yeah. agree. should have immediately the option. Um, here is my definitely not me new Twitter. I got banned on Twitter today. Go follow that. And I'll see you over on Legal Mindset Stream. Before you leave, though, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to follow Dan Bask everywhere he goes. Make sure you get pictures of him. Send me him. And <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and also don't move across the country to be with Dan, please. And also yes. like the stream on the way out and uh, make sure you join my locals here in a second. I appreciate you guys. I love you. I'll see you guys uh, Wednesday with critical drinker at 4 PM. i um, going to be an early show cause he's in Scotland. So 4 PM with the critical drinker. And I'll see you Saturday at the live show with Nick Ricada. Make sure you get your tickets, get the hell on it. Dog on it. Appreciate you guys so much. Bye everybody.